Jared Schofield, uh, really the club could be entering another very successful era. Can they uh, cause an upset today? And uh, time now for the national anthem, and here is Emma Davis. Australians, all oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girt by sea. in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare in history's page let every stage advance Australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing advance Australia It's a very healthy uh, East Perth contingent and uh, so much about grand final day which is important to the players and uh, the cup is what it's all about of course but uh, even the national anthem certainly gets the hairs standing up on the backs of the necks of the players as well as all the spectators and uh, we go down now to uh, Rod Willett and Michael Genovese who are patrolling the boundary this afternoon for the toss of the coin. Good afternoon to you both. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Phil. Well, a very interesting day this afternoon. There's no doubt about that. The uh, conditions have certainly made it uh, very difficult. But um, East Perth have won the toss. They'll actually kick to the uh, the western end, or the actual Subiaco end, uh, to the right of screen. So we're hoping that uh, it's going to be a very good day today. The wind, the wind and the rain, well, they've been here uh, probably since halfway through the Colts, about actually 10 o'clock. And uh, hopefully this afternoon, the wind has died down, but the rain still likes it's like it's going to hang around, Jenna. I actually had a bit of a walk around on the oval. It was unbelievable. There's not actually a dry spot on the ground, and uh, it's certainly going to be pretty tough for both teams. Absolutely. Just watching the two teams in the warm-up, a couple trying to bounce the ball just to test out the feeling of the ground today, and none of the ball's coming back to them. So you won't see that uh, normal style of footy that you see on Patterson Stadium, the run and carry. I don't think we'll see much of that today. It'll be kicking long, it'll be kicking to contests, and it'll be the hard in and under ball, uh, which will go a long way to winning this game. Now East Perth, they've been a uh, very good side. They showed that two weeks ago. They've probably been on top for the majority of the ladder. There's always been a lot of talk about the alignment between the two teams, but certainly in today's conditions, uh, you know, last sort of fortnight, they, they smashed East Perth. Uh, with disposals all around the ground, but certainly today's conditions don't do that. I think they've got to play the corridors a little bit more. They've still gone in with the four big talls, but certainly uh, what we have seen over the last few weeks is you've got to take your opportunities when they present themselves, especially in these conditions. 100%. And, and one of the areas that uh, Jared Schofield realised that they needed to improve on after that second semi-final loss was the hard in and under contested ball winning. Uh, and, and one of the major inclusions into the Subiaco side this week is the captain, Kyle Horsley. So he'll go a long way into improving Subiaco in that area of the game. You're right that the conditions will probably even it out a little bit in terms of height east perth going in with the taller list it'll probably flatten things right out today so i'm expecting a, a really close contest one of the things you'll need to do uh, boys is certainly keep your head over the footy get it on as quick as you can all right just about to get underway clint wilden and darren harris also joining us for the start of the 2014 grand final and let's get it started it's johnson who wins it in east perth with the first clearance towards half forward opportunity for the royals We've got a hand pass away as he was tackled. He's over the top of it again. Umpire um, says he'll get the free kick. Let's head downstairs and find out about the East Perth bench. Yeah, thanks, Clean. We've got Dean Carlwallard, Jared Oakley, Nichols, Freddie Clutterbuck, and Brand College all on the first bench. For Deep East inside attack in 50. A shot on goal is across the face. Right across the face, in fact, from Smith. And it's out of bounds on the full. You fight back from the line, OK? OK. Josh Smith there uh, snapping it just a bit too acutely. It's a long kick in by Subiaco, off hands. Taken by Butler, works the kick up toward full forward and Stevenson doing well. Just chips it in front of uh, McInnes and takes a good mark. So Stevenson in steady rain, up towards half-back. Della Hunty was the target, couldn't take it. Lee from ground level, flips up the hand pass to Blee. Or oh, going back, not completing the mark. East Perth, through came Stevenson again. Tried, get, tried to get a hand pass away. Ash Smith intercepts, he goes to ground. McGinnity, who got the first kick of the game, gathers this nicely, sends it goalward. 
Off hands, Rumble is there, Clancy Wheeler doesn't even want to concede a behind, and he spears a long kick onto wet grass. This will skid very close to the boundary line, and in fact, good work by Subiaco's Lefanu to force the ball over the line as we go down to Michael Genovese and Subiaco's bench. Yeah, Scott Worthington, Josh DeLuca, Joel Latham and George Hampson, the inclusion, all starting on the bench for Subiaco today. So Stockley stands alongside Johnson. Missed out last year for West Perth. Came across the Subiaco. Got a bit of a touch. Ball goes to the ground. Johnson's able to gather. Ball ricochets away. Attacking the football. Toomey wanted it. Couldn't gather. Lee. Hand passes inside. Attacking 50. Over the top of it. Leishman. Broke one tackle. Got a hand pass away. Phelan goes beyond defensive 50. Numbers will favour East Perth. Putting his head over the top of the football. Eventually he'll get it. Wilson gets the kick away. Not what he wanted at all. Out of bounds on the full. It's told all about it as well by Chris DeLuca. So a free kick again to be taken by Subiaco. Pressure's been intense early on. Opening two and a bit minutes. Subi come down the line. Yaron tried to just flick it on. Didn't work. Off his hands and over again for a boundary throwing between the two interchange gates. Well, it's good to see DeLuca's there. Chris DeLuca. Big clash of knees last week. Looking in all sorts of trouble. Actually, ended up getting back on the game on the ground last week, and he's obviously fit enough to play today. Yeah, when he left the ground during the preliminary final on a stretcher, Didn't he probably wasn't good. thinking grand final at the no. time. But he's out there to his credit. Stockley gathers the footy after contesting the ruck. Scurries the ball up towards the half forward flank. Here's the dangerous Shane Yaron. Got the footy and fell over. Allows Fraser a chance for East Perth. Has a bit of time to get it onto his boot. Screws it up towards Butler, who controlled the wet footy brilliantly. Sam Butler will be a key. Goes to centre half back. Good low pass to Johnson. Dropped to one knee to take it. And now gives it off to Blee. Blee touches the ball down. Had plenty of time. Jared Schofield wouldn't be happy with that. And the mark's been paid to Sinclair. Just held it long enough under these conditions. Well, he actually conceded front spot then. Clancy Wheeler. Wheeler. Which he doesn't want to do. Flips off the hand pass to Ash Smith. High ball to the goal square. From behind, the good mark taken out there by McInnes. Judged it to a nicety. Just outmanoeuvring two Subiaco defenders there and controlled that on the second bite. So McInnes will bring up the first score of the grand final. And you just about put it down now as a goal. He's directly in front. As he comes oh. in and kicks the ball into the man on the mark. Well, there you go. What were the odds he was not going to score from there, Darren? Nah, those are the conditions, aren't they? They're going to play tricks with you today, but um, you, you should always kick the goal from there straight out. But Stevenson started pretty well on McGuinness, except for that contest. He had a couple of really important early uh, contests, but those, those matchups with key tools are going to be critical. Sinclair wins it down. Smith, oh, this time again. Tried to swing the boot at the ball. The first one went out of bounds on the fall. Didn't make any real contact that time. Ball shoveled forward. And his free kick will be spotted there. It's a holding decision. He'll come back and Subiaco will have it at full back. There's some important matchups down there, aren't there, with all those big men. Uh, you know, Rumble's taking Smith down there. You've got Stevenson on McGuinness. Um, they're really going to have to stand up. They'll mix and mash, and Wheeler will take the other tall, mainly the Ruckman. Bristow's played all 22 games for Subiaco this season. Really hard worker. Beyond defensive 50, up with Sinclair. Had two goes at it and then took the mark. Nice work. Sinclair, short the former line, has turned it over. Hanson tries to get past one. Has he kept it in? No, he hasn't. It'll come back. Great to see him out there too, isn't it? Uh, you know, the, the three inclusions for Subiaco are critical ones. And mcginnity has gone to Horsley and they're going one-on-one -on -one together. So that'll be a great matchup today as well. East Perth forwards have been inventing ways of not scoring in the opening five minutes of this game. Better right for the ball fresh forward. Air shots, shots from directly in front, set shots from 11 metres out. Subiaco have done well. Still, it's nil all. Frank Stockley and Sinclair. Stockley just uh, such a strong body. The ball goes down to the front of the pack. Lee and Horsley, they're going to be two very important components of their respective sides. Latham's kick was blanketed. I spoke to Frank Stockley's father, Mike, before the game. He's uh, come here all the way from Denmark, and I'm talking Denmark and Scandinavia. Wow. Left Copenhagen on Friday and arrived here this morning. So hopefully things can pan out for the Stockley family. He's in ruck opposed to Sinclair. Palms the ball down to the front of the pack. He's in there tackling now. Lee managed to get a semblance of a kick away. Hampson picks the ball up, immediately dragged down and dispossessed. Leishman, did he drag it in? The umpire has a look, blows the whistle. 
and umpire Parry, the trio of field umpires, umpire Stuart Parry, Scott McPhee and Matt Adams officiating this afternoon. Matt Adams winning the most improved umpires award this season. Sinclair, that's a solid tap out after it again. He big buck. Worthington won the footy as well for Subi. Short to Hampson. He gets a hand pass out. Subi juggles but is able to gather it. Short pass. Oh, Della Honey bounced away from him. Ball still in dispute. Slapped down by McDougal. Butler over the top. Ducked one tackle. Della Honey knocked the ball away. Lee goes in. Couldn't quite get there. DeLuca to Yaron. Now to Latham. Strong tackle. Nicely done, Sinclair. Clear the balls out to Cadwalder. East Perth in attack. Anderson on again to Clutterbuck. He'll head towards full forward. The juggle mark couldn't be taken. It's still there again for the Royals. Sliding through McGinnity. Oh. He's taken high. Yep. It'll be a free kick. He went low. The Subi play didn't get low enough. And uh, there was definitely a contact. He might have been a bit lucky there, Rumble. I reckon he could nearly have given a free kick away in that contest. They got away with it. But, uh, yeah, Subi player coming in there, which was Wheeler. Wasn't it McGinnity that slid into his leg? Well, he did, but I think he'd won the ball, Lammy, and I think Wheeler was late on the on the on the scene, so to speak. Very important player in these conditions, Patrick. Oh, McGinnity. this will suit him down to the ground. This, Actually, this is his footy. Played the last nine games of the season in the AFL with the West Coast Eagles. Played ten games for East Perth in 2014. Five goals, five as a Royal, or six-six rather, five-five as an Eagle. This is a very important kick for East Perth. He's been able to steer it through. The Royals at last get a goal that they so craved. They're one straight six. Subiaco yet to score. We've got eight minutes in the opening term of the grand final of 2014. Well, we've gone eight minutes, and they've had seven inside the uh, 50s, East Perth, to one. So they've had all the ball there into the ground. It was a matter of time before they got one. They've missed a couple of opportunities up before, Darren, and uh, they made the most of that one then. Yeah, we've just seen the ball going one way at the moment. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And um, good signs early. Uh, Latham uh, has been trying to go to McGinnity, but like we said, McGinnity is just such a hard nut to be able to be roaming around in that forward line. He's got good leg speed. Great start by him. Very pensive. Ryan Dawson in the coach's box. McDougal for Subiaco trying to get the kick away unsuccessfully. Butler, who's playing in the centre of the ground, kicks it up towards centre-half forward. Ball knocked into the path there of Horsley. Now running straight at him was Freddie Clutterbuck and forced Horsley to kick wide. He was under pressure. So in the end, a pretty good result for Subiaco. Good decision by the umpire. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, look at the... There was a player coming across his body is the reason they ended up out here. Very good defensively, East Perth, at the moment. They're just controlling everywhere. There's no place to go for, for Subiaco. So McDougal, in the end, maybe got a fingernail to it. College taken to ground. Comes down now to Payne. Couldn't get it to his boot. Hampson can for Subiaco. Up towards the half-forward line. Anderson attacked it nicely, but straight to DeLuca. That's Chris DeLuca's hand pass. Unfortunately for Subiaco, goes to Butler, then to Clutterbuck. His hand pass to Wilson under a lot of pressure. Coughs the ball up. Boland hand passes away from the area. Horsley's there. Knocks the ball. Tried to knock it to Chris DeLuca. That was unsuccessful. But he gets another chance, does Horsley. Just gets his toe to the footy. Yaron overruns it. Picked up by Boland, who snaps at goal. And it's glanced the post. Good to see Subiaco get some re-entries there. It, uh, it looked like it might come out easy. But great pressure by Subiaco forwards. And Boland, he's very clever. Bit unlucky there that he uh, the, the ball just swung late and hit the post. This is Boy with the kick in. And a ruck battle going up. Smith! That's a great mark. He looks on, doesn't he? He's been good up forward. He's missed missed one early, but that was really quality mark. Finds Cat Wilder, the 24-year-old, close to the boundary. Not a great kick. Horsley was there to scoop it up for Subi. Short hand pass, the two ones battle away. Rumbles there, couldn't control the football. It's out between the interchange gates again for another throwing. What an important in Horsley as he comes off yeah. for a rest, but uh, what a Quite great a few inclusion. Important balls, hasn't he, in the last uh, few minutes? Shot of Darren Rumble. Looking for a fifth they Premiership this afternoon. He'll be the first Subiaco oh, player to do that. It was a holding decision. So they'll take the advantage and Bristow for Subi. We'll put it towards the attacking 50. Going up defensively. Fraser couldn't get there. DeLuca showing plenty of courage sliding in, but the low contact will be against him. Oh. It's a pain it's hurt him too. too yeah. it, 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 that's great courage by DeLuca. So he's the one who last week in a similar yeah. incident and he goes in hard. Jeez, it's... 
probably because he slides and the other East Perth players on his feet, it's probably technically a free kick. It is the right decision. Wilson was sore too as East Perth head towards the commentary wing. McDougall contesting in the air, so too Sinclair. Knocked forward by Lefanu. Comes down to Phelan to scurry to kick away. Picked up initially by Delahundy, then he was dispossessed. Hand pass, fed out, fed out there by College, hacked out of midair by Fraser, into open space at half forward, foot race, Lee, oh, straight at the footy, went rumble courageously, somehow got rid of the footy, but his immediate opponent, Smith, gathers the ball, and then there was stacks on the mill right in the corner of the centre square, around about right half forward for the Royals. Both coaches before the game talked about being hard at it, oh, no, rumble uh, set the standard there. McDougal has a free shot at it to DeLuca. Latham, workmanlike kick up to the half forward line. Stockley couldn't take it. Yaron's had a couple of opportunities, just struggling with the conditions at the moment. Gets a kick into open space. Bristow elects to double fist the ball forward. Hildebrandt had it bounce into his arms, then he was caught. Now it goes to Yaron again. Once more, the ball slips out of his grasp, tries to soccer it through. It's not going to have the journey, and it's helped on its way in the end by Jacob Brennan, so a rush behind to Subiaka, but Yaron... Uh, well, he was clear, the... Yaron, he didn't realise. He could have actually uh, picked that up and had a shot. Excuse the pun, but he seems all at sea. He looks dangerous, though, and that's a great sign. Uh... Well, he looks really dangerous. But he, he could have picked it up. He was well clear. He didn't need to soccer off the ground. He could have picked it up and just straightened up. We know McDougal's a thumping kick from 51 out. He'll go long. It won't have the distance on this wet day. Punch down. Subiaka with another chance. Kick around the body from Bristow is touched. He's had another minor score. He's having an impact early, Bristow, and he's one we talked about, you know, head to head with McGinnity and Lee and those types in the middle will be really important for Subiaco. Taylor made for Jason Bristow. Now that kick very deep into the pocket. It's accepted by Fraser. Goes with a long ball. Sinclair and McDougal. Sinclair knocked it down to Butler. Clever kick across his body. Gains plenty of meterage there. Attacking the footy was Johnson. Oh, well done by Oakley Nichols. Just knocked the ball with his boot along the boundary line. Gathers it brilliantly. Now he's at right half forward. Doesn't have too many options. Giving chase there is Worthington, who corralled him brilliantly. Created the pressure that forced the mistake. Picked up by Marnie. Interesting hand pass. Toomey, the player of the preliminary final, emerges, goes with a hand pass to Phelan, under pressure, hand pass to Stevenson. Toomey back in there again, feeds it out to Worthington. The, um, the uh, East Perth supporters thought that was a fro. They might have just about been right. Another one maybe from DeLuca, doesn't matter. Della Hunty with a high ball, in towards Saw, just over oh, the Fraser, mark. having the better there of Chris DeLuca, has taken the mark. Good start by Fraser. Goes across to centre half back, conceded a little bit of ground. Got in the end to Carter, to Jacob Brennan. The check side kick from Brennan is good, and it's been marked by College. Very classy kick by Brennan. East Perth down the outer side. Payne, he's been told he's tied over the line, so I'm he's got to move it on. Yeah, so he kicks it high towards left half forward. Decent battle on there. Sheets there for East Perth. Stevenson for Subiaco. Stevenson went to ground. The ball spilled towards the boundary line. Oh, that's solid work coming in from the side from Subiaco. It's been a fantastic couple of minutes, hasn't it? Subiaco yeah, back contest. in the, back yeah, they in have. the game. They've just lifted their tempo a bit, Subi. Only a rough and tumble at the moment. Wet and greasy conditions at Subiaco for the WAFL Grand Final of 2014. Stockley in front. Johnson, though, works his arm around. Came out the side. Lee getting the hand pass out. Payne over the top. Couldn't gather. Bristow got a kick away. Hurry down the outer side by Josh DeLuca. Umpire spots a free kick. It's going the Royals' way. They'll just have got it on get, the outer side. Just got to get front position, don't you, in these conditions? Yep. Brennan looks to switch play. Ball bounces to Lee. Gathers, the former Royals' best and fairest, towards right half forward. Or dropping the mark was Johnson. You normally expect a bit more than that. Cleverly tapped out, though, to Smith. He'll get a kick away, Smith. Inside attacking 50. Subi first to respond. Leishman's hand pass was to Subi. Put his head over the top of the football. Try to work it back to Leishman. He's surrounded by Royals. Umpire will ball it up inside East Perth's attacking 50. Good, tough contest so far in East Perth. They lead it by three points. And they've got it just inside their attacking 50. Umpire Parry throws it up. Johnson got the left hand to it. McGinnity slid to his knees as he took possession. Payne over the top of Stockley. And the umpire said that's got to be high. They've got the advantage. Hildebrandt, such a clever play, just realised the situation and took advantage of it. Long kick up to space. Brennan cleverly knocked the ball away from Yaron, but straight into the path of Phelan, who runs to 60. He's a great kick, Phelan. And that one was always going to have about a 20-metre skid on it. But it's gone through for a behind the margin now. Two points. Lauren French there just indicating 
the behind. And again, we congratulate both Lauren and Sally Bowd, the first two females to officiate together in a WAFL Grand Final. I don't think um, Yaron was very happy then with Phil, and I think he felt they should have kicked it over in front of him, over his head in front of him. Boy, yeah, to yeah. a contest out of sight. The punch came at the back. The ball is going to be locked in here, and eventually we will be balling it up. Just yeah, great. I, I just reckon with with Yaron, I'd almost isolate Yaron by himself down there. I reckon he looks really dangerous today. I try and get him one out inside 50 there, bring the players up the ground. Brendan's done really well in the last couple of contests. Yeah, I but I right, just reckon dangerous, yeah, he it? does. As long as he keeps his feet, they're judging. She got a kick away to the outer side. Got it on to College now. He kicks towards left half forward. It's set up nicely though for Worthington. Oh, collided into the back of. McGinnity, who stayed down. He looks a little bit sore. Ball now on the outer wing. Still with it, Horsley. Spun out of trouble. Just pops it into the centre square. Well, through the hands of Waters. Slippery conditions showing at the moment. Delahunty moved it on again. Hildebrandt, hurried kick inside the forward 50. Back there, those Brennan in best position. Been there a number of times today for the Royals when required. And he finds Johnson with the short foot pass. Johnson's kick was touched. It's going to be turned over. Horsley. Send it, sends it back from whence it came. Bolan nearly took the uh, mark on the second grab. Might get another chance here. McDougall wrestling for it for Subiaco. The umpire will call for it. Well, the ball a moment ago, Judgey and uh, Darren went straight to um, Jacob Brennan, which wouldn't have really pleased Shane Yaron. No, he was throwing the arms around again. Uh, here's Josh DeLuca. That was knocked, knocked brilliantly down to him by McDougall. Great effort by Subiaco. The left footer has put Subiaco in front. One goal for the Lions to one straight goal East Perth. And that was terrific play. Yeah, I think well, it, was it was Chris DeLuca. Was it? Yep. And... Uh... Oh, no, Josh. No, Josh. Josh. It was Josh. Josh. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, well, I'm Josh. Yeah, well, I said it was 7-1 inside 50s. It's now 9-6. So it's been 5-2 to two since I said that. So Subi have done all the attacking now. I mean, I, I, there's no doubt... At the start of this game, you felt East Perth had them on the back foot a bit, but they've certainly turned, reversed the uh, the trend now at the moment. Subi are doing all the attacking and are, are doing well. Younger of the DeLucas, the 18-year-old Josh on the scoreboard for Subi, and it's put them in front too, the Lions. That'll give him a lot of confidence, uh, Josh DeLuca. Picked that one cleanly off the pack. It's his 12th game of footy, and it's a WAFL grand final. Smith tried to get it away. Marnie's in there. He's locked in by a couple of Royals. Horsley tried to lend some support, but the umpire already said we'll be balling it up again. And Marnie throwing it back to our umpire. Two rucks, lock hands. Johnson took possession. The kick was into Hildebrandt. Gets it towards half forward, though. Lefanu decides just to soccer it towards the outer wing. Hampson should get there first. Gathered it nicely in the wet conditions. Kicks around the body towards right half forward. Punch came at the back from Cadwallader. Sat down there for Sheed. Might have been taken high. Umpire says no. It's holding the ball. They'll take the advantage quickly. Subiaco. Bristow towards right half forward. This is Hildebrand. He's 51 out from goal. He'll set it long towards the top of the goal square. A couple of players collide with each other. Ball off hand. It's down and rushed over the line. Ash Smith quick to respond. Another point, though, to the advantage of Subiaco. Their lead is out to five now. 19 gone in the opening turn. Bolan collected his own man there, I think. It might yeah, be uh, DeLuca. Oh. Chris DeLuca. Oh. Ash Smith absolutely murders that one. Bristow, the recipient, comes down to Josh DeLuca. Didn't get enough boot on the footy. Another chance for Smith. Went through his fingers. Will, uh, Wilson hand-passed it to Brennan. Now, Brennan had prior opportunity. He was just manhandled over the line there in the end by Marnie. Just no exits for East Perth then. Great no, pressure no, by Subiaco. Fantastic pressure. This is Wilson. Wrapped up after an earlier incident. Well done, Kyle Horsley. Nicely done from Horsley. It was getting the fist onto the footy. It was out to McDougall. Back to Horsley. Kick got smothered. It came forward again. Marnie trying to shovel the hand pass into attack for the Lions. Still an opportunity here. Plenty of Royals over it. Bounces off a pair of shins. Comes back to McDougall. Short hand pass to Bristow. 50 out. He heads to the top of the goal square. Backing back, though, with courage was Cad Wilder. Saw it drop into his lap. He'll go short. The pass had to be accurate. It was. He's got it to Smith again. The bright orange boots shining on a dull afternoon here at Subiaco. The kick is towards Wolf. And a hugely experienced Royal takes the mark this afternoon for him. Game number 243 in the WAFL. To the outer side go the Royals. No one could take the mark. Lefanu 
Got it. Got a hand pass away to Rumble. Rumble will put it back inside. Attacking 50 for Subiaco. Anderson was there. The punch came from Bowen. He'll set it up for a neutral ball at right full forward for the Lions. Well done by Bowen, Dan. It's great to see that Hampson, Bowen and Horsley all having an, have impact, an impact and don't, yep. don't look like they're physically uh, under any pressure. So well, Horsley's going fantastic. well. Fantastic. Inside 50 is now nine apiece. So Subiaco with the momentum over the top Sinclair. Palmed it down, but it was taken by Horsley. Immediately the ball was clamped to his body and the umpire calls for it. Yeah, so getting some first hand on ball inside those stoppages, which is great. Bristow's having a really big impact and Horsley as well. Well done to the people who have turned up here at Subiaco Oval this afternoon, braving this weather as uh, Sinclair has a big knock toward the boundary line and Leffenew and Wolf run at the footy to no avail. So 50 metres around from Subiaco's goal. Chris and DeLuca still trying to get that body to work, isn't he? He's still very sore. Rain just falling straight down, so it would indicate that there's little breeze out there at all. Up goes Della Hunty, won the tap, socket off the ground there, out of, well, off the ground or mid-air, if you like, by Ash Smith and fortuitously landed on the chest of Oakley Nichols. Kicks the ball out. Cleverly, beautifully weighted ball to Clutterbuck, who didn't have to break stride, continues on the momentum, gets it and uh, under some sort of pressure too, delivers nicely to Johnson, the left footer, goes for the torpedo punt kick, nearly marked by Smith, he had a couple to beat, Toomey prevails, gets it to Wheeler, back to Toomey, looping hand pass goes to Marnie, I think it's a ha one hand pass and kick game today, the ball comes out the back door, Josh Smith there again was manhandled to the ground, Della hunty has been pretty good. He got it off to McDougal, whose kiss, kick lacked anything at all. It just dribbled off his boot lace, went to Cadwallader, who was going nowhere. So the umpire's been kept busy, and they will be in these conditions. Well, it's, it's a day for knock-on surge on. Nothing, no, nothing special, not trying to be cute and all that sort of stuff. Just get it, kick it forward, knock it on, surge it on. McDougal again gets it up to Della hunty then he knocks the ball back into the contest. Yeah, no, you're, you're spot on, Judge. You had two forward handballs from Toomey when he had a chance, yeah, to, kick, chance to kick the ball 50 kick, metres, yep. get good yardage, meterage on the on, on a day like this. And he's an experienced campaigner. McDougal rucked it well. Waters, hand pass to the call of Hampson, who did likewise back to Waters, and he was uh, taking the ground. Good uh, pressure by Blee. Someone's lost a boot. It's uh, Reese Waters. You can just see the water there, yeah. too. It's... Uh, been raining a lot today and when we see him drop those marks it is very slippery out there yeah that's mainly on the boundary line i mean the ground itself drains pretty it's well not too bad yeah sinclair mcdougall third band up delahunty hampson got a hand pass to waters now waters tried to accelerate in the end he got a hand pass away but it was under pressure fortunately bristow was there hand pass didn't make much contact delahunty went forward hard hard work there by blee just grubbers a kick forward johnson's there for east perth now Johnson around his body and a good mark, almost a reflex mark taken there by Collins. And the right half forward flank, a couple of kicks out from goal. This one goes into the pocket and uh, Callum Sinclair was taken out of the contest and the East Perth Ruckman will take the kick. It'll be a difficult one from there. Not necessarily yeah. the distance or the angle, but the combination of that with the weather is going to make it a hard shot. Good decision by the umpire. Bristow yeah, took his eye yeah. off the ball, took the big fella out. He knew he was out of his height. Height range. Certainly is a gettable one. And Sinclair usually makes good contact. The conditions will really dictate how this kick comes off the boot. And not badly struck at all. He's just gone across the face of goal. So minus score the first one for a while for East Perth after kicking the first goal of the match. It's their first behind their one goal seven to Subiaco's one six. Subiaco will be hoping it's not one twelve or thirteen like last week for East from Anil. Right up the corridor, worked a treat. Waters marks, got it away to Phelan, and then he turns it over. Wilson marking on his chest for the Royals. Back into attack towards right half forward. Opportunity now for Josh Hill. Hill will put it towards the top of the goal square again. Big pack up, bringing it down to Guinness. He won't be kicking into the man on the mark this time, I'll vouch. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it is McKinnish, yeah. He, uh, taken a couple of great clunks, hasn't he? In these conditions, that's a big mark. Yeah, he's, a, he's a quality young player. He's you just wonder whether they're not too focused on Smith and that, and he's getting under their guard a bit, you know? Yeah, well, it, it's pretty hard. The three tools down yep. there are all having an impact. McKinnish to put the Royals back in front. And he does so. East Perth with their second. 
2-1-13, Subiaco, 1-6-12, 26 gone in this opening term. Tell that shot for goal, he's kicked that pretty low too, hasn't he? I mean, as long as he gave, gave a lot of height, I mean, After the, he didn't make the, the same mistake as the, make us, make the same mistake as last time, but certainly, gee, that was a low kick again through for the goal. But, gee, a couple of really good marks to him in these conditions. They're really special marks. He can play this kid. He doesn't have much opportunity at AFL level, uh, but he's got some talent. Well, he's one of only four East Perth players to play all 20 games this year, Judgy. Yeah. And he's a competitor too. And, and, and I think you're onto something with regards to Smith. They've isolated McGuinness down there. They think that's their best matchup, and they've got uh, all the other forwards up, leaving him alone in the square. Subiaco going to get the clearance eventually. Latham had a few grabs at it. Couldn't purchase it initially, but then got it off to Phelan. Now Yaron finds the footy, needs to hold his feet, he does, he's outside 50, unloads a massive kick up towards the goal there. That had the carry and everything, just the wrong side of the post. But still, Shane Yaron continues to be dangerous. He was probably the difference between the two sides in the last quarter of the preliminary final as Wilson spots up his man and Stephen Payne on the right half-back flank. Well, as I said, he's so dangerous. I'd isolate him in their forward line, exactly like they're doing with McInnes at the other end. So Payne to a big pack. Two Subiaco players got in each other's way. Stockley punched it and effectively spoiled Worthington. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Smith right up outside 50. Uh, they've taken the other tall off and they're trying to keep space with McGuinness. And I agree with the way uh, Yaron's looking. That'd be a fair setup up the other end. Sinclair and Stockley. Stockley from behind slapped it forward for Subi. Got it back to the big man. Then got tackled and lost it. Lee couldn't take it. All there again. This is a decent tackle. Butler. Managed to just hurry his way forward. Ball came back to him again from Clutterbuck. In there's McGinney. That might be a little bit high. It is. You know, you still got to skills still stand up in these sort of conditions, and that's what Yaron's got. He's got good balance, he's got good skills, isolating. So Horsley well, flying in to try and create a contest then was Della Hunty. Ball spilled down again. Lee, just a hurry kick forward. Clutterbuck might have been held without it. He was. That'll go against Horsley. I think when you get a better look at this, uh, he actually had a fair bit of Horsley's jumper, and Horsley was sort of trying to get off it. Rutterbuck did get the free kick, goes inside attacking 50. Spoil came from Toomey. Out now with Hildebrandt, gets a hurry kick away, straight though to Lee. He'll put it back inside the forward 50 for the Royals. They had all the numbers then, they're in the right position too. And they've got the mark, and Sinclair should be able to go back and kick the goal. Yeah, Frank Stockley punted a little bit there. Sinclair pushed forward, and Stockley looked at him and looked like Subiaco were going to win the ball across half back here. But uh, wasn't, able to, yeah, wasn't yeah. able to get back and, and get on him. And Sinclair, well done, he found the space. Well, the tools in these conditions have been okay so far for East Perth, haven't they? Something we thought might have negated that, 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 that height. It's not having an impact at all, the weather. 20 goals for the season, Sinclair. This is going to be close. It hits the post. He'll be disappointed with that. Despite the conditions, there's no real breeze to speak of. It's enough, though, to put the Royals in front by a point. 2-2 two -two plays 1-7. A couple of behinds to Callum Sinclair. Yeah, you take a couple of those misses and the, the one into the man on the mark, and they could very well have been five goals. Stockley. Uh, oh, takes oh, a very mark. good mark. Had to uh, really become quite flexible there through the spine region, did uh, Frank Stockley, to take that mark, and that was right on the quarter-time siren. So a terrifically entertaining first quarter in the 2014 Grand Final. East Perth, the hot favourites, are two goals, two, but right on their hammer. Subiaco, 1-7-13, just a point in it at the first change. East Perth in attack. Anderson, one again to Clutterbuck. He'll head towards full four. Subiaco with another chance. Kick around the body from Bristow is touched. He's had another minor score. He's having an impact early, Bristow. A couple of kicks out from goal. This one goes into the pocket. And uh, Callum Sinclair was taken out of the contest. No, he was throwing the arms around again. Uh, here's Josh DeLuca. That was not, not brilliantly down to him by McDougall. Great effort by Subiaco. The left footer has put Subiaco in front. 
Well, as you'd expect in a grand final, uh, the players from both sides committing their bodies. It certainly has been willing out there and the conditions are uh, really bringing that on as well. But some pretty good skills out there in the first quarter, Judge. You mentioned the fact that uh, whilst we might have expected the uh, weather to be a bit of a level up for the big men, East Perth's big men have probably been the difference between the two sides at the moment, notwithstanding well, the fact that McDougall has done very well along with Della Hunty. Yeah, the yeah no, they have. The East Perth forwards, you know, I thought with this sort of weather conditions, that, that height factor they had mightn't have had much impact. But McInnes has been good. Sinclair's been good down there as well. And Smith, while he hasn't taken marks, he's actually been quite good with a couple of pickups at ground level. So uh, they, they've been OK, their tools there. But look, the game started with East Perth looking like they were, well, they really controlled the game. It was seven inside 50s to one. And then I Su Subi turned it around completely and won, won the next sort of 10 to about two inside 50. So they had their chance. East Perth got a goal late in that quarter that just gives them a slight margin at quarter time. So interesting contest. Subi have been good, taking it right up to East Perth. I just since East Perth perhaps had a couple of opportunities. If they'd taken those, they could have been a couple of goals further in front. Yeah, look, for me, the, that you, you got to the, hit the nail on the head with that first five minutes. It looked like it was East Perth all over them physically. Um, but then Bristow and Horsley, a couple of those yep. players in the middle became very important. And all of a sudden, when they got the ball and it hit the deck inside forward 50, DeLuca, Yaron, they started to look really yep. dangerous. And uh, Boland, although he hasn't had a lot of the ball, was having an impact in the air, getting the ball to deck. So they were able to keep that ball in their half. But... Um, it's going to be a really interesting contest. I, could, I couldn't see it being much more than this for most of the day with the no, way both teams no, are competing. No. Look, look, as I said, they, to me, they started, I thought I was, Subi really look a bit, bit sort of intimidated by East Perth. But then they just said, no, these blokes are human. We can take it up to them. We heard Jared Schofield say that in the pregame. Yeah. These blokes are human. They've got a heart. They've got a heartbeat. So we can, we can compete with them. And they were fantastic with their, their competitive nature then. So I thought it was good. But I'm going to beat the drum. I want Yaron one out in the forward 50 for Subi. <laughs> OK, well, you can keep uh, keeping that. that. <laughs> I'll tell you what won't take long is the goal scorers because there are only three of them and two of them for East Perth, McInnes and McGinnity, whilst for Subiaco, the solitary goal scorer, Josh DeLuca. And for East Perth, Sinclair was terrific, taking three marks in these conditions. Couldn't convert, however. Johnson, five, kicks it at a uh, hand pass, a couple of marks as well. Fraser was busy in defence, having a good battle with Chris DeLuca. Lee, half a dozen possessions, five to Wilson in defence. Ash Smith, five kicks. Butler has started well with five, and College also four and two marks. Whilst for Subiaco, Bristow with eight possessions and Horsley with eight as well. They really have been busy. Field and seven possessions. Josh DeLuca, a great goal from seven possessions. Half a doesn't to Hampson. Hildebrandt got out in his own on a couple of occasions in that quarter, looked dangerous. Yaron, looking dangerous, hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. Five possessions, five all saved to Toomey. And, uh, Judgey, when you put it all together... I, I just reckon the handball's from Sumi's yeah. point of view. I mean, they want to kick more often than that. I mean, if you look at the, look at the 59 kicks, the, uh, these birth 14 handballs, and only one for one in the handballs to kicks for Subi. They need to kick the ball more than handball it. They certainly do. Well, uh, let's go down to the East Perth huddle. It's a pretty tight one, too, at quarter time. So we're going to get the back to come up with him and block him out. You guys just play traditional now, OK? Yeah. Rucks, you guys just keep hitting forward, OK? No matter what, we're going to get the B player to come up, stalk their winger, and we just keep surging the ball forward, OK? A little bit fumbly, OK? I think we're plus two first possession, clearance is down three. So we're getting our hands on it, wet conditions. We've just got to keep trying to get the ball forward wherever we can, OK? Um, composure inside 50. I reckon we go into B zone a little bit too much, like that 40 out. OK, we want to keep taking the game on, but understand... OK, so Adam Selwood uh, there, Rod Willett, is providing the voice in the quarter-time huddle. Yes, mate, indeed he was. And he was pretty happy with the way they started as well. He said, you know, it's not a game to uh, finesse too much. He said, let's just get it forward, whether we knock it forward or, or uh, kick it forward. You know, just get the momentum going our way. And in the rucks, he wants us to try and, uh, you know, single it out and actually belt it forward out of the congestion as, as much as possible as well. They talked about Kyle Horsley. They want to try and just stop him and his influence on the football as much. And also uh, have a little bit more composure when they're inside 50. Obviously, they, uh, they break the, uh, the forward line into sort of A, and B section, so it was quite interesting to have a look how they want their big forwards actually rotating through those two areas. But at the moment, very happy and happy with the start. So there is uh, Brant College, Freddie Clutterbuck there as well. This is uh, a very, very good uh, unit, no doubt about that, East Perth, but Subiaco taking it right up to them. It's a fiscal contest. We're going to go down to Michael Genovese, who's got Jared Schofield. Jared, what did you make of the first quarter and what was the message at quarter time? Oh, I thought we were slow out of the box. The first 10, they really showed us in the contested stakes and uh, the tackling, the pressure. But I thought we fought hard to get back in the game. And unfortunately, we obviously, we're probably a couple of opportunities away from uh, kicking a couple of goals. We just need to make 
sure we do that this quarter. What do you make of the kick to handball ratio so far in your yeah, team? Yeah, I've just mentioned to the boys that uh, they need to limit their handballs. That's kept them in the game on turnovers. We need to make sure we get out more kicking going instead of handball. And the boys have obviously just got to have time to sell into their first grand final. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Yeah, that could only be a good approach, I think, to limit the uh, the handballs in these conditions. But certainly it was Subiaco during the middle part of that quarter after East Perth took up the running in the first part and then finished off very strongly. Subiaco need to uh, start the way they played during the middle part of quarter number one. So the Royals have a point advantage as we get the second term underway in the 2014 grand final. Both rucks had a little touch. It came down to Horsley. Kick off the side of the boot. Squirts to the outer side. Phelan's there for Subi. Latham goes to his knees. The hand pass intercepted by Butler. He got tackled. Got the hand pass forward again. McGinnity turned to pain. Kicks high up in the air. It's going to be long enough to be a mark. And going back, unable to take it was Toomey. Still down to Wolf. Got a kick out of nowhere through traffic. Only as far as Delahunty. He'll put boot to ball again. A telling kick. Subiaco players go up. Couldn't take it. Spilled down to Wolf. They'll get another opportunity. Subi through Stockley. And then no one could control it. So it's over the boundary line again for a throw in. Yeah, it's a great point you made at half time about the, the kicks to handball ratio. And, and um, Jared Schofield straight away would have seen first two possessions were handballs, and you got the chance to get 30 or 40 yeah, metres on the ball. Yep. Spun back in once more. Sinclair was able to win it down. Did well. Lee pushed it forward. Bounces back towards Wilson. Gets a kick towards right half forward. Courage shown by Worthing and diving forward to get a punch on the footy. Not able to keep it in though is pain again hard up against the boundary the long sleeves Ken you used to wear them what are they like on a day like today uh, very handy <laughs> geez I've been impressed with Worthington uh, his chase on Oakley Nichols before and a couple of his efforts have been fantastic back into play Sinclair again down no telling oh. tap Marnie all went almost kicking in danger it was against his own player Stockley had put his head over the football comes out the side again Lee lurks, merging with it, Marnie. Lee tackles him, spilled out to Butler, who gets a kick away for the Royals. Inside their forward 50, the punch came from Wheeler. Down there's Worthington, got a kick away again, but once more it's just high up in the air, no real distance behind it. Good challenge on. Latham got a kick into the middle of the ground. Opportunity for DeLuca, went back again to Phelan. His kick's only as far as Anderson, goes back by hand. I'll move it forward again now, East Perth. This is Wilson to the outer side, real battle on the wing. And the ball. Again, over the boundary line for another throw-in. That man has been very busy today. Kyle Horsley wasn't too far off the top of the Sandover medal count on Monday night. 45 votes for him and the captain back in the side and working hard for the Lions. And missed five games. He did at the uh, front end of the season. Now, well done by Stockley to get rid of his opponent, then gather the footy and punt it forward. Close to the boundary line again and uh, too elusive there for Carter, who's picking up uh, Reese Waters. Pretty close to goal two, Waters camping. So they're not uh, yet looking at isolating Yaron, as you have said that perhaps they should judge him. It's a good start, Ed, mate. Uh. I'll tell you what is constant, though. The rain it just uh, hasn't got any heavier, hasn't eased up. Sinclair continues to play well. He's a constant for East Perth. Good mark in these conditions, too, there by Hill. And Josh Hill right up on centre wing, southern side of the ground. Goes to the one-on-one. -on -one. Rumble in front there of Smith. Rumble tumbles the ball out the back door to Horsley. He's always there or thereabouts is Kyle Horsley. And that's great delivery in these conditions. Yep. Beautiful delivery onto the chest of George Hampson. Two players missing from Subiaco's lineup last week. And aren't they happy to have them back on the big day? Waters just uh, forced under the footy there by Carter. He got both hands to it. Would have been a great mark. Geez, those one-on-one -on -one contests forward are, are important. Rumble wins that one. He's able to get the ball out. Horsley hits the target. Just crucial one-on-ones when, uh, when there's space in these conditions. He's certainly not phased by this big occasion. Darren Rumble. Stockley doing well in ruck. Socket off the ground by Bristow, knocked further afield by Ash Smith. Reading it nicely is Marnie, front edge of the centre square, goes with a long ball up toward full forward. Brennan got a hand to it, the ball got behind him, however. And he's gone through, or gone over the line, I beg your pardon. It's a boundary throw in just adjacent to the right hand behind post. Subiaco going forward, they still trail by a behind, there being no addition to the quarter time score. Good body work by Bristow, which gave him space then. He won't get a stat for that, but it was quality team play. Sinclair again, won it down. Over the top of it was Horsley. And it's just rushed through once again for a minor score. 
Yes. Would that be three or four rushed? I think four. Four, again. four, four rushed. Yep. I've got four. Four rushed. Does that answer your question, Darren? Yes, thank you. Scores are level again, by the way. 14 apiece. Emphatically. Emphatically, <laughs> yep. yep. Three good judges. Wolf at the back of the pack collects it. Gave it to Fraser, who's been busy. Cadwallader should have done better. It allowed Bristow in a dangerous position to get the ball forward. Yaron came out under pressure. Sheed got it dangerously to Wil to Wilson. Wilson turned it over. Gave it straight to George Hampton. He doesn't miss from there. Such are his mercurial skills. And Subiaco, drawing level a moment ago, have now taken the lead by a goal. Two goals, eight the Lions. East Perth 2-2. Two -two, Travelled five minutes into the second quarter. Well, good pressure. Good pressure there by the uh, Subi forwards. Results in a turnover. One of those handballs under pressure there again by uh, yep. East Perth. It wasn't a quality one. Um, it was a bit loopy. And uh, Hampson, who's been a great inclusion, you know, what, what a fantastic trio of players to come in, all having an impact, which is important. But, um, yeah, that's a, that's a really important finish. And, and if Subiaco can keep getting the ball to deck, there's enough players in the DeLucas, Yarens, etc., Hampsons, that, that will score. Shared last year's best and fairest at Subiaco Hampson. As the Lions are forward again, and Hampson's out after it once more. He and Blee mock arms. Down there, Fraser lends some support for the Royals. Trying to get a hand pass forward. Umpire said we'll be pulling it up. What, what was his problem last week, Lamb? He was at his knee. Is that uh, what he missed? He had Hampson? a soft tissue. I think they're thighs, aren't they? Yeah. Both quads? Yep, yep, yep. Quad. Quad. yep. He had the quad. Horsley with the quad. Oh, pushed him in the back. About that and Boland, Boland was a, a hammy. Yep. So Johnson spears the part. Oakley Nichols. Oh, oh what's oh, he gee. done? He's completely dropped the football cold then. Understandably, considering the conditions, it is a cool afternoon. But as Stevenson said, thank you very much. Wilson's there to clean up. He'll kick around the body for the Royals. Only as far as Bristow. It's been good Bristow. Problem. Yeah. Bristow sends it back into the attacking 50. Anderson in front. Reckon he got the fist of the footy sort of over the boundary line. Oakley Nichols must have spent it before. Well, he had it and then he spent it, oh, but he didn't spend well, it correctly. Here, he, here it is, Cliff. He was oh, shaping up to kick and it's just hit the knee. It's hit the knee. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh dear. There's an there's a ad on TV at the moment that would fit in rather, rather well with that. Trying to footify people. Now that's going to be an interesting decision. The umpire racing in says, give the ball to me. So uh, inside 50s right at the moment. Subiaco 13, East Perth 14. And they're inside attacking 50 now. The Lions as Johnson wins the duel in the ruck. The hurried kick goes to a contest. Winning that contest is Oakley Nichols. No mistake on this occasion. Tumbling kick over centre wing. It's going to get up toward the half forward line. Leading the race to the footy there is Leishman. He's under a lot of pressure from Butler. Leishman taps oh, the ball no. back to Toomey. Got past Toomey. And Clancy Wheeler just uh, finesses the ball over the boundary line. So quick transference of play by East Perth. They've got it to their right half forward flank. I wonder what the, uh, the crowd is up to about now. It's difficult to say because everyone is, is undercover. Is finding a spot uh, behind a glass door, behind a window, undercover at least. Bristow again got hands on it. He was slung to the ground. Marnie elects to go the soccer. That didn't work because Butler was in the way. In fact, it was Lee paddled the ball into the path there of a teammate in Butler. Still, the ball is alive. And there was a holding decision there. Subiaco player in Clancy Wheeler. He was there yeah, one was second and gone the next. He was just slung out of the picture. He was lucky, Judgey, because the first one could have been there. Well, um, and, he, and, he had, and he actually, yeah, he had, a, he had hold of the ball and just uh, he got jarred free in the tackle. So Wheeler, beyond defensive 50, almost another good mark to East Perth. This time Johnson. Ball in the middle of the ground. Wilson. Well done by Boland to hold him up there. Finds Lee. Lee will move it towards left half forward. Oh, Horsley. Applied real pressure. Got there. Won the footy for Subiaco. Kicks around the body. There'll be a race on now. Yarren against Brennan. Yarren elects the soccer at forward at right half forward. Brennan's done really well. Scoops up the footy, short hand pass to Lee. Lee can get a kick away. Good defence from the Royals. It comes again to Hill. Hill tumbles it inside or just to the top of the 50. Off hands, scooped up again by Wheeler. This time Subiaco with good defence. Bristow got a hand pass, not where he wanted to, to the opposite number one. Can roll it up inside the forward 50. Smith marks. That's just unlucky for Wheeler there. Wheeler did yeah. everything right. Leaves his man, plays the team, team game. Bit unlucky Bristow with that handball, wasn't he, over his head? Uh, 
Well, again, he was a bit stiff. He was under pressure. He had to do something. Couldn't kick, so his handball gone for distance. Went straight to an East Perth player. And like a true forward, Smith just stuck out the back and went forward where the space was, and he's the recipient. I'd like to go better than he shot at goal did in the opening, sir. Well, these, these are tough little kicks today on a day like today. There's the angle. He's a quality player, Smith. That brings the Royals fans to their feet on this wet and grey day. We're locked up again. 20 points apiece between East Perth and Subiaco. Ten minutes gone in the second term in the 2014 WAFL Grand Final. So just great one-on-one -on -one contest, wasn't it? The Yaron Brennan one here at half-back was fantastic. And it, yep. the ball ends up there. Bristow, really good tackling. Cod, Cad Wallader, he just doesn't miss targets. He's one of the one of the elite kicks in this waffle competition. And Smith's there. He's the recipient and goes back. And we know he is a beautiful kick. And uh, as soon as that left the boot, he was already celebrating. Well done, Josh Smith. Yeah, that delivery by Cad Wallader when uh, other players are making it look difficult because of the conditions. He was just so precise with that pass. The rain is really abated at the moment. Might just be sprinkling. Clutterbuck slides on the wet grass. Socket off the ground by Bristow. The umpire says play on. Oh, what was that play? 14 and a half metres only. Horsley into the pocket. Ball going to go very close to the boundary line and it's uh, too elusive for all pursuits. Jeez. Bristow is having a massive but impact on this I game. Mean, he's the knock-on surge on stuff. He's soccer them, socking them off the ground. He's kicking them forward. He's just keeping the ball, getting that forward momentum going all the time when he's in the contest. 25 metres, sorry, Darren. No, his leadership's just been outstanding. Stockley got a hand to it. Sinclair it is that kicks the ball away from that stoppage, but straight into the arms of Darren Rumble. Doesn't often get too many possessions this close to goal. And not that he's going to be able to score from there. He's called to play on. The kick was a hurried one. And uh, he's miskicked that. Yeah. Well, it was, I don't know, he's called to play on rather prematurely. I'm not too sure exactly why, but Hill found the ball coming straight at him. So it goes with a long kick to a big pack, Worthington highest. And he destroys the ball over the line and out of bounds. Worthington and Clancy Wheeler doing good jobs in defence for Subiaco at the moment. It's great to see a grand final where it's just one-on-ones all over the ground. There's no numbers back. It's just a contest everywhere. McDougall was up, down as far as Payne, just worked it forward. Smith, oh, lovely hand pass, going by Hill, tried to take a bounce and take on the opponent. Hopefully Nichols couldn't gather. Horsley once more, he's been everywhere for Subi. Kicks around the body, scooped up by Waters, just gets the kick away. Great pressure coming from Cad Wilder. Ball in dispute inside their attacking 50 for Subi. Trying to lock it up. That's what will happen, we're balling it up. We've seen a couple of great chases today, haven't we? We, we saw Worthington's earlier and that one was a fantastic one by Cad Wilder. Yep. Just lucky he got a boot in. Yeah, Waters. Play on! Play on! Oh, oh, in the ground was the worker. Now that was that awesome. is a free kick, yep. No question there. Chance for an off. Shot at goal coming the way of Subiaco now. It'll come back to Chris the worker. 28 goals, 22 for the season for him. It's a tightish angle. Looks like he's recovered too, which is a good sign. He, he bowling came back into him with the flight of the ball and hurt him earlier in the, and he was hobbling around for a fair while. And we know he copped that big hit last week that looked pretty ugly at the time. He's and tough, isn't he? He's a, he's a hard nut, yep. 13-minute mark of the second term. Any score will put Subiaco back in front. Mr. the worker. Be hoping for the major opening. That's a terrific kick. They're back in front by the goal, the Lions. He's not limping now, Clint. Oh, no. A leap into the air. No problems whatsoever from Chris DeLuca, and he joins his younger brother, Josh DeLuca, as a goal kicker for Subiaco this afternoon. They lead by six points. 13 and a half gone in his second season. And when the score's 2-8, then you've got to go back from that. It's not an easy shot from yeah. there in these conditions, and he slots it. That's just so important for his team. And we see here, he uh, goes back with the flight here. I don't think that was the one, but he did definitely deserve the free kick. It was an accidental contact high by Callum Sinclair, but they all count. And Stockley and Sinclair, the latter winning the tap. Going after it, there was a feeling. Just hovered over it. McGinnity contesting him with it. Now they arrive in numbers. That's going to be a hard ball get. Nobody going anywhere. It was Lee who ended up with the footy, but to no avail. Bit of an unsung hero feeling. He's had a lot of football this year. He certainly has. 
He's had a very good year indeed. That hurry kick by Lee. Goes out wide onto the flank. Marnie's there first for Subiaco. Keeps the ball in play. Phelan may have wished he hadn't. But it turned out all right for Subiaco. He was just manhandled over the line by Pat McGinnity. Still, they just wanted to hand that one handball, aren't they? He needed to kick that out of the contest. Yep. Yep. And I reckon that Jared Schofield must get the runner out there and reinforce it because he certainly made the point at quarter time. Stockley gets a hand to it. Ash Smith hovering over it. In fact, it was Sheed. Now Wolf, he's got the bandaged up head, and I think Wilson has as well. So a couple of East Perth players. Well, let me again the comparison: 72 kicks, 51 handball, Subi. East Perth 85 kicks, 24 handballs. Yep. Yep, it comes down nicely to Hill. Hurry kick. Wheeler attacked the footy pretty well. It ends up there with Latham. He got a hand pass away. Leishman under all sorts of pressure. A bit lucky there, Horsley, I thought. Now, number nine is Toomey. He picked the ball up and he was absolutely enveloped by black and blue. So, 15 minutes have gone in the second quarter. Just a little bit of a lull at the moment. Subiaco lead by six points. Don't knock it over on the foot. The umpire just warding the Ruckman there. It comes down to Marnie. Kicks it up towards the centre wing. We're just shy of there. Wilson, the other player for East Perth with that bandaged head. Marnie left it behind. Smith maybe got one in the back. He did. So against Boland, they've got the advantage. McGinnity kicks the ball into the pocket. Oh, good lead. Good disposal. All of that, I stand by, except uh, opening Nickel wasn't able to hold the mark onto his chest. Good work by Worthington, and we've sung his praises already, and again, he did well. Yeah, that was an impressive spoil, and uh, they're trying to isolate Oak Oakley Nichols in that matchup in the goal square for a lot of that last five minutes. Both rucks had a tap. It came down a hill. This would be something very special. We'll have the distance at one. Geez, McGuinness has got a good leap, hasn't he? He didn't mark that on the line there, but uh, he looks dangerous every time the ball's in the air at the moment. So Toomey doing the kicking in for Subiaco. Worthington is the target. Gets the hand pass off to Wheeler. Breezy ball, never, never going to be easy to take. But Subiaco will take that, you would think, 65 metres around from East Perth's goal. They've got a stoppage they can set up from here. So it'll be Stockley opposed to Johnson on this occasion. Play on. Neither Ruckman got it. Johnson lost his footing. Not so Stockley. Rewarded with a kick, but the blind kick again going straight to the opposition. And Blaine Wilson, just forward of the centre. Good looking kick with the wet pill. Wheeler going the punch. Would have been better advised to try and mark. There was no one else there contesting it with him. Latham to Wheeler. It's not touched. I thought it was initially, but it went straight to Hildebrand. Now, Hildebrand. Good delivery on the lead, McDougall. So he's between right half-back and right centre wing, Andrew McDougall. Had a very good first quarter. Goes to the half-forward line. Pack of four at the back of the pack. Yaron gets to the dangerous side. He's 60 metres out. Doesn't quite make the right contact. Blee's going to be favoured by the bounce. Blee clearing kick in toward the centre square. Controlling it there with Sheed. Might have tried to finesse it a little bit too much, but he got a second chance. Rubbers the kick away. Wolf hovering over the top of Toomey. And Bristow there calling for a free kick or hailing a cab. The umpire will come in and ball it up. Yaron's uh, had an interesting day, hasn't he? He's tripped over, he's missed kicked the footy, he looks yeah. dangerous. I think he was trying to get some distance in. I think he's deliberately tried to kick that end over end, I reckon. You can see Bowen heading towards the top of the goal square. Just didn't make the contact he wanted. Yaron, the ball's over the boundary line. If, that, if that's the case, I would have loved to have seen it go in the air and hit the grass. Yeah. Probably that was a better option. East Perth looking for their first premiership since 2002. Subiaco, their first since 2008. The Royals were here last year and lost to West Perth in the premiership decider of 2013. Hoping to go one better today. It's Subiaco through Stevenson tumbled to kick back towards the boundary line. And themselves another throw. Been good a couple of their key defenders. Stevenson's been very good. Rumble as well. They, they're, they're under enormous pressure with those tools, but uh, standing up. Boys, well, probably our first real break in the weather at the moment as uh, those clouds start to move away, so hopefully it might improve. Johnson won it down. Wolf got knocked out of the way by Stockley. Lee's in there trying to lock it in. He does so. They'll be balling it up again. I think if you were Subiaco, you'd be reasonably happy if the conditions continued to rain and stayed the way it is. They're six points up. They've been in the contest. Johnson, almost a clean possession for a moment. Marnie couldn't gather. Still in there to Lee. 
Had a couple of games with the Bombers. Good tackle from Toomey, but Butler got a hand pass away. It's oh. back towards the bounty line. That wasn't what Waters wanted at all. Out of bounds on the fours. He tried to soccer it forwards. He'll give the Royals a free kick. So the ball will be taken by the super experienced skipper of Craig Wolf for the Royals. It'll tumble back his way. As you mentioned, he's got the bandages on. So they've been doing a bit of work with the Royals medicals today. Kick is towards centre wing. Ooh, a little shove in the back. That'll be a free kick. Sinclair pushed him. Lethal pushed him him as well, yeah. So Stevenson has it. He's got it on centre wing for Subiaco. They'll go back into attack at right half forward. As he goes the distance, big pack there. Delahunty nearly didn't, uh, well, he didn't get a second chance. Wolf hacks a kick away. Phelan gathers it nicely. Josh DeLuca, deft little kick. Picked up nicely by Hampson. Faints with a hand pass. Gets around under the right boot. Goes with a long bomb. Got through the hands of Bowler. The chance now for Hildebrand. Hildebrand stands up in the tackle. He had no prior opportunity. And the umpire says he's dead. Yeah, it's stiff. So the tackle applied by Jacob Brennan. Well, certainly... The East Perth contingent in the crowd was supportive of that decision. I'm not too sure whether or not Sean Hildebrandt would agree, but there's the low pass from Brennan. Going to his knees was Anderson. One of the better games I've seen Brennan play. Um, he's, he's having a, a good impact in his one-on-ones. Looks really polished at the moment. Anderson goes with a long on, kick on, at on. the back. Is Wheeler. Josh. Won the one-on-one. -on -one. Gets a bit of a spiral on the torpedo punt. Here's Brennan again. He'd be quite happy if this goes over the boundary line. And that was pretty well played, I think, by Brennan. He was quite happy to uh, execute that kick as he was just over. He didn't have many options and could have been kicking it back into enemy territory. Just a couple of times, Subiaco's forward structure when the ball leaves, just not working back, making sure there's one-on-ones. The East Perth have been able to get behind the ball a couple of times uh, and, and guard that dangerous space. Still Subiaco by five points. We're into time on in the second term. Third out was Delahunty, he couldn't get there. Came down to McDougal, throws the ball on the boot. Leaping Yaron couldn't mark. Opportunity for Subiaco. Phelan has kicked the goal. A little bit of afters as well. It's really on now. They don't like each other much at the moment, these two clubs. Bristow's furious. Goodness me, it has boiled over in the 2014 WA Bill Grand Final. They are furious, these two sides with each other. I'd be keen to see what sparked it all up. I was watching the goal yeah, kick. That's what I was wondering. I can't work out what's happened there. I think it was after he kicked the goal. Um, he was run into, but uh, geez, Bristow looked upset, didn't he? Well, we might get a clue here, boys. So here it is. Nicely worked, and then that was long from McDougal. The opportunity came to Phelan. Lovely snap, and that's what I watched. Threw him, well. him on the ground. Threw, Threw him, him on the ground after, after he kicked, he kicked it. it. Yeah, there's yeah, not much oh. in that. Yeah, I mean, gee. Bit of a show of strength, though. And well, yeah, I thought. I think the boys were just making a bit of a statement, weren't they, really? Yeah. There wasn't that much in it that they need to have all that carry on. A few blokes made some very solid statements. That was, that was not a malicious throw to the <laughs> Subiaco kicked three goals to one in this second quarter. McGinnity getting the hard working clearance up toward the front edge of the centre square. Coming through, Butler gets the hand pass. McInnes it was, the hand pass didn't find the target. Now there'll be another stoppage just outside the centre square. Centre half forward for East Perth. Just Craig on the Craig goal. Wolf with a bandage on his head. Yeah. That's unusual in his career, isn't it? <laughs> he looks fearsome enough without it, but uh, that's quite accommodating, that bandage. Josh DeLuca helps the ball on its way with a soccer. Waters fell over. Here's Hampson, who's dangerous. Couldn't take it cleanly on this occasion. Carter, likewise. The ball still in dispute. And this will end up with a whistle. Bit of so, George Hampson needed one more kick there. He needed to get that one ground. off the ground again. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. They've, they've got some momentum at the moment, Subi. They They're have. really up for this fight. Delahunty's been third man up on a number of occasions. This time it's going to fight a clutterbuck, however. Hand pass to Butler. Right yeah. centre wing. Pretty good delivery off the boot, but it favoured Wheeler in the end. He put a fist into it. I reckon Hampson's just done his hamstring. Boy, George Hampson man. just coming from the field. He's, he's grabbed that left hamstring. He's in a lot of pain. Great looking kick from Cadwallader. Up goes Toomey. Had to put a fist into it and did. The ball's still alive. Kept in beautifully by Sheed. Here's a chance for McGinnity. He knocks it into the path of Lee. Clever hand pass Lee to Smith. Smith bullets his way clear. Snaps across his body. Great commitment there by Worthington again. Subiaco defenders, when they're called upon, they work hard. That's bad news for George Hampson. I'll tell you what's bad news. Other than the fact they're one player down, likely. 
he's one of their better players. He's been going quite well, so they're going to lose. There's a double whammy for them. Michael Genovese. Yeah, yeah, I think just, they're just trying to decide whether or not it's a tear or whether it's a cramp. So it could go either way, but he seems to be in a hell of a lot of pain right here. He's getting work from the physio at the moment. Well, we'll trouble of his right cramping before half time. Mm. Just the last couple of games, of course, with an injury. Quad injury for Hampson. Punch the back came from Sinclair. Keep our focus on the game at the moment. Socket forward, but only as far as Sinclair again. Latham just put boot to ball. Let him off Sinclair, the hook there, Sinclair. And that was disappointing because there was players lining up. Wolf and also Hill were right there. Sinclair couldn't find either of them. Hit the boundary line instead. So we've got our throw ourselves a throw in. That's just credit to Subiaco's pressure. Um, Sinclair didn't realise how much time he had then, but the perceived pressure that Subiaco has been able to put them under. Play on. Dougal's at the back. It came down towards Smith. He'll kick around the body. It'd be special if it was accurate. It's not. Missing to the right-hand side. A couple of times East Perth have had the long-range shot and haven't been able to convert. Worthington finds Toomey. Long kick from Toomey. The centre wing. Delahunty the target. Phelan had it, lost it. Through went Payne, who's been a little bit quiet by his standards. The ball comes out the back door. East Perth with the numbers there. Wolf had his bandage pulled, I think. <laughs> it wasn't his hair. Well, they couldn't have pulled his head off because it's actually strapped on. <laughs> <laughs> so the pushing and shoving continues. There's a lot of feeling out there, but there is so much at stake. And this has been willing right from the start. Subiaco lead by nine points. Fraser gets around DeLuca. That's Chris DeLuca. Well done by Fraser. Delivers long to a big pack. Smith, surprisingly, stayed down at the front of that pack and was nearly rewarded with a possession. When you've got that many big blokes up forward, sometimes you have to stay down, don't you? He's, uh, yep. Well, he's actually been okay there. at ground level. He's, he he's won a few ground level balls today, hasn't he? Been dangerous without really hitting the scoreboard. I don't think he has. Oh, yes, he has. He's got their only goal in this quarter, I beg your pardon. Stockley and Sinclair both in the wrestling. Payne gathers it, kicks it very, very high into the pocket. Johnson was there looking dangerous. Wheeler again did well. Those Subiaco defenders, Darren, you've mentioned it, they really are combining extremely well. There's that understanding down there and each of them doing their own their job. They've done a great job all year and they're, they're giving away height, but uh, definitely some great experience down there working well together. A throw in. Down again. Really working hard, slapped away by Subi. Worked beautifully for them too as Toomey can go down the outer side. Numbers with East Perth. Came down to Carter. Eventually the hand pass off the ground. Oh, Fraser got taken high. Good pressure again, isn't it, by Subi? Okay. That was inventive, oh. but not what he wanted. Brennan saw it go straight to a Subiaco player in Delahunty. He kicks to the outer side. Again, fists on the footy, sliding out Carter. Just cleverly tapped it back. Little toe poke. That was good too. And there's a free kick spotted for a push. They're coming right and back. Going back yeah. It was really well done by Carter. And, Wasn't it? And, and it doesn't seem fitting that result. That, that, that's a, the, it comes back to where the kick is and can't you play advantage? He's about to yeah, kick inside exactly. 50. Well, the play before is Carter Shepherd of the football. Tapped it back with the foot to this player in Butler who got the free kick. Brennan's got it again. Been busy today. Short pass to Lee, marking through the centre circles. Brendan Lee assesses the options. Short once more. One of the two bandaged Royals. Wilson will put it long towards full forward. Big pack up. Bringing it down was the Royals and Smith was in the right spot. He said, thanks very much. It was there for him to kick his second. They respond to East Perth when Subiaco looked like things might have been swinging their way. Going up was Sinclair. Long and dangerous kick inside the attacking 50. Sinclair, there he is, bringing it to ground. Smith said, you beauty. Well, I said earlier, he's been, he, hasn't, he hasn't had to compete in the air, Smith, but he's been really good at ground level day. That's a classic front and square by a mid, what you'd get from a mid-sized player from a key position player. It doesn't matter what size you are, front and squares are as important, you know, to the team. And he got it and finished really well. He's uh, looked dangerous. All, all of day, from, from his first contest yep. of the game, um, you know, he, he didn't get the result early, but he's been in everything. And, and what a clean kick off the left foot. Horsley took it, couldn't get it to his boot. 
Soccer's at Ford. He's such an intelligent player, Smith. He knows how a forward line works. That was a great pick-up by Waters. Gave it to Horsley. Tumbling kick into the pocket. Yaron within Brennan. Here's a chance for Hildebrand. Changes direction. Gets himself clear. Hand pass McDougal. Forced to kick very hurriedly. And again, Brennan diving on the footy. Not giving it a chance to bounce any which way. And just forced it through for another Subiaco rush behind by my reckoning. Yep, five. I agree. Five. Royals have it through Brennan. Ryan has ease, much to the delight of everyone. Michael Genovese will give us an update shortly, I'm sure, on George Hampson, who appears to be OK, despite our earlier fears. Cad Wallet has got it. That was on a bit of a run. Spears the pass beyond defensive 50. Lovely pick up from Toomey. Puts it back into the left forward pocket. Anderson punched it down. Hildebrandt with the opportunity. Kick was smothered. We get another chance. Hildebrandt's over it once more. Lee goes in to tackle him. Ball locked in. We're balling it up. We might head downstairs. Michael Genovese, what can you tell us? Well, they've heavily strapped up George Hampson's left leg, which indicates to me that they're going to try and give him every chance to return to the field. He's just completing a series of run throws now. But he's not going anywhere near 100%. So I guess it'll be his call, the coach's call, and the physio's call as to how much more he'll play in this game today. Sheet soccer's the ball away from the stoppage. Hitting the contest at speed was Leishman, but he overran it. Marnie gives him some support. Does it look like, is it a hammy? Are they saying it's a hammy or shedding any information on it, Jenna? Jenna? They're not shedding any information on it just yet, but it looks like a hamstring. It's the same leg that he's been carrying an injury on. So that was a quad injury that he had earlier. So sometimes mm. you just compensate with different types of muscles and it puts too much strain and bang, it can go like that. Relieving the pressure was Wilson, but only momentarily with a high kick went straight to Stockley, who stood his ground courageously. Bat battling really well against the two big men. He's important, Stockley. There goes the kick from him back to centre-half forward. Off through the hands there of Josh DeLuca. Needed to do just a little bit better. Good tackle applied there by Worthington. Held to him, said umpire Parry. I reckon he was waiting for contact then, Josh DeLuca. Yep. He didn't realise he was actually clear. Could oh, have marked yeah, that. They could have marked it overhead. Even with the... Well, the ball probably getting a little bit more sticky at the moment with the absence of rain. McDougal, that was very, very ambitious, trying to get a kick away from that pack because there are about... 18 players around this theatre of play, right on the 50 for Subiaco at centre half forward. Yeah, Josh DeLuke has been good. He's probably the youngest player on the ground today, and uh, he, he's having a good impact for Subiaco. Stockley got a hand to it. Johnson, though, roved it, if you don't mind. Just showing his versatility. Here's Oakley Nichols with him, Leishman coming through to me strongly. Created an opportunity for Stevenson. He brushed one tackle aside, punts it up forward, or nearly taken there by Boland. Anderson gets a chance. His, here is now Ash Smith. That was blanketed off his boot. Horsley clean with the pickup. Forced to kick very high. Underneath it is Wilson. Yaron from behind him applies the punch. Subiaco deep in attack as the siren goes. The half time siren brings to a closure a very, very tight, very entertaining first half here at Subiaco Oval. The 2014 grand final, as we expected, is a tough one. A close tussle, and the Lions, four goals, 9-33, leading East Perth, 4-5-29 at halftime. The margin, four points in favour of Subiaco. And Wallace should have done better. It allowed Bristow in a dangerous position to get the ball forward. Yaron came out under pressure. Sheed got it dangerously to Wilson. Wilson turned it over, gave it straight to George Hampton. There's the angle. He's a quality player, Smith. That brings the Royals fans to their feet on this wet and grey day. Mr. Luca, be hoping for the major opening. That's a terrific kick. Throws the ball on the boot. Leaping Yaron couldn't mark. Opportunity for Subiaco. Phelan has kicked the goal. A little bit of afters as well. It's really on now. They don't like each other much at the moment, these two clubs. If you've only just joined us, that last passage there shows it has been a very willing first half in the 2014 second semi-final for the Royals. Two goals to Josh Smith, McInnes and McGinnity, each with one. And for the Lions, singles to Chris DeLuca, Hampson, Phelan and Josh DeLuca. So it was the Royals by a point at the first change as they go in for the long break. Subiaco have turned it around marginally. They lead by four points. 
four nine to four five. And uh, I guess, guys, we have uh, we've got what we expected. It's a tough one. It's a tight one. And I think Dar Darren, you made the point uh, at quarter time. You'd be surprised if there's much more of a differential between the two sides as we advance through to the final stages. Yeah, it's twenty five inside fifties each, uh, and it's just been a great contest. You've got to make the most of your opportunities. We've seen Smith do that front and centre. The, the back line of Subiaco have stood up really well against the Tools, but um, yeah, it's a it's a cracking contest. Yeah, look, I, I can't get a winner at the moment. I must admit, at stages during the uh, second quarter there, I thought Subi looked like they're starting to get some control. I thought by the end of that quarter, it was a pretty even contest again. I couldn't find uh, either side have any great advantage. But uh, there have been games, Subiak, I'll give them that. You know, for a game that we, in a game that we thought East Perth could probably sort of win, uh, maybe, you know, reasonably comfortably, they've really taken up to them, Subi, so they've been great. But whether they can continue on, I think the Hampson thing's going to be important. If Hampson's out of it... They lose a good player, but they're also down one rotation. And it's tough conditions today. I mean, it's hard work. It's contested ball after contested ball. If you're down one player, that could impact on their chance of winning this game. There's no next week, obviously. So if they can use him to pinch hit, bring him on, play him inside attacking 50, maybe uh, scurry a goal here and there, he may be a still, still of some value to them? I would think so. I would think. But if it's a hammy, that's about the only thing he could do. It yep. depends on how bad he is. He's not going to be able to run through the midfield because he's not going to be able to go. He's smart enough that if he was standing in the goal square, he might kick he might, a goal. He might create and he something might give for you. Someone it's three exactly or four right. minutes. Yeah, uh, rest. just a bit but of a spell. The one for me is uh, in the middle with Bristow and Horsley can keep going, and Stockley like they've just been fantastic mm. against. Uh, Stockley's know, done well, hasn't he? Oh, he's done really well. well. I think you'll find that they'll just keep going. You know, there's well, no... well, Bristow doesn't know any other way, no. does he? Neither does Horsley. So, yeah, yeah. And Stockley's not going to let this uh, opportunity go. So the big men can continue to uh, play a big part in this grand final. What would un unfold after half time? Just stick with us and see. But on Monday night was the night that all the stars came out. It was the count and presentation of the 2014 Sandover medal at uh, the Crown Ballroom. And uh, all of the stars were there, including our very own Brett Sprigg, who uh, put on the dinner suit and the bow tie. And he was in attendance and half time at the footy. Today, he brings us all of the colour and the glamour and the fashion, as well as the highlights of the 2014 Sandover medal count. It was a big night for Aaron Black. After that, we'll be back with some of the highlights of the season as well, including some of the great goals and marks of the season. Look forward to seeing you back then. Hello and welcome to Halftime at the Footy for the final time in 2014. It's one of the most hotly discussed topics throughout the WAFL season. Who will take home the Sandover medal? Very shortly, we'll go inside the count, get all the atmosphere from inside the Crown Ballroom, and of course, we'll hear from this year's winner. But first, all the glamour of the Red Cup. It's one of the best nights on the calendar, and the 2014 edition was no exception. Today's stars mingle with champions from years gone by at a who's who of WA football. Many come to have fun and toast the season, but for some, the night could be an important, life-changing occasion. Kyle Horsley is one of the favourites for tonight's top honour, having led the way during a solid season for Subiaco. Claremont's Luke Blackwell is a proven vote-getter, having won the award in 2011. Will it be one of West Perth's midfield brigade? South Fremantle's Hayden Schloyth is also fancied. And of course, there's 2013 winner East Fremantle's Rory O'Brien, who remains a strong chance, along with his teammate Brad Dalziel. Everyone here is aware of the level of prestige involved in the competition's highest individual honour. Well, I suppose it's uh, your effort for the whole year. It's something that you don't aspire to from the beginning of the season because the main thing is you want to play in a, in a final with your team. That's the most important thing. But if you get selected to be, you know, in the top of the Sando medal voting, it's, uh, it's prestigious, yeah. Look, it's a great club to be a part of. Um, when I won it in 76, it was an absolute thrill um, getting it at 20 years of age and I thought that would be it. But when one came along about eight years later, I was very grateful for the second one. So, yeah, I'm just very humbled to be a part of this club. It's, it's a fantastic uh, night to be here. It's uh, you know, it's it's an individual award that you don't really think about when you're playing footy, um, but when you've retired, as I have a few years ago, it's uh, it's great to be here and uh, catch up with the with past winners and uh, especially the guys I played against and played with. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Frank. 
Montauk AM, ladies and gentlemen. Barry Cable, MBE. And the past winners play their part as the night begins with the annual Parade of Champions. Right on top, Rory O'Brien. To kick off the awards, Albert Dean from Swan Districts picked up the Colts Jack Clark medal. West Perth had its first winner of the night with Aidan Lynch winning the Prendergast medal for the reserve's best and fairest player. South Frio's Ben Saunders was presented with the Bernie Naylor medal for the second time in his career, booting 59 goals in 2014. And no surprises as Brian Dawson is awarded Coach of the Year for East Perth's dominant season. And the anticipation building, the count gets underway. Welcome to the 94th Sandover medal count. It was Brad Dalziel who got off to a great start with an early lead after five rounds. Shane Nelson and Luke Blackwell weren't too far away, but it was a slow start for the Subiaco skipper, Kyle Horsley polling his first votes in round eight. After 10 rounds, Dalziel had managed to keep the lead. Uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise at the moment. Um, I played a couple of games early, but I uh, missed a few with injury, and um, a lot of the guys in our team, we started a seven-game a seven winning streak, and a lot of guys are playing some real good football, so um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not thinking I'm a, I'm a silly chance, but um, yeah, I'm not really hoping. I think there's a lot of other guys that have put together some good performances like Horsley and Blackwell, and I think they're going to come home really strongly in the end. West Perth versus Subiaco. The next few rounds didn't wield too many surprises, with Nelson, Blackwell and Dalziel all continuing to feature. Horsley entered some mid-season form and picked up 18 votes in the space of four rounds. Subiaco, K Horsley, five votes. As we entered a break in the count after round 19, it looked as though a new challenger may emerge. West Perth, A Black, five votes. West Perth's Aaron Black stormed into contention. OK. Brad Dalziel briefly took back the lead with four rounds remaining, but it was the momentum of Luke Blackwell that kept everyone guessing. Blackwell, Going into the final round, the room was set for a grandstand finish. I declare the 2014 Sandover medalist Aaron Black of the West Perth Football Club with 47 votes. Aaron Black polled votes in 16 games, including the last eight, to be awarded the competition's highest honour. He finished just one vote clear of Luke Blackwell, who was unlucky not to poll votes in round 23. Black's teammate Shane Nelson finished joint runner-up, with Horsley and Dalziel rounding out the top five. It's definitely a great honour and I'm still in a bit of shock at the moment, but I'll definitely enjoy it and, and soak it all in. You know, I worked really, really hard uh, the past four or five years um, to get to where I am now and, and I sort of pride myself on how hard I work. So I know I can get to this level and keep getting higher and higher. So um, I look forward to many good years ahead. To the 2014 Sandover medalist from the West Perth Football Club, Aaron Black. Great result for our footy club. We've been really disappointed on field this year. So a bit of a consolation. You know, Aidan Lynch winning the reserves medal. Two of our boys come second and third in the, um, in the, in the Colts medal as well. But Blackie, 21 years of age to win a brand uh, set over medal is absolutely fantastic. He deserves everything he gets. So there you have it. West Perth's Aaron Black joins an illustrious group to become the 2014 Stanover medalist. Yes, Brett Spring not looking at a place there in uh, the glitzy glamour count of the Sandover medal. Great effort by uh, Aaron Black. He's a deserving winner. Terrific yep. effort by uh, also he and uh, Shane Nelson I think uh, polling 93 votes yeah. between them. Playing for a West Perth, they only won nine games. Yep. Two really gutsy, talented midfielders. Do they polled well? Well, they both get lots of the ball, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. So, I mean, they just, I mean, Black's just a, you know, just knocks up and getting him week after week. So, uh, good effort by him. Perhaps a little bit of a surprise. I think the, the Blackwell oh, yeah. thing, most I, of us thought I Blackwell might have got votes in the last game yeah. of the year. He didn't. We saw the game. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blackie just uh, n nudged Blackie out. Yeah. But, uh, certainly Luke Blackwell uh, would have been a, a worthy winner. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, yeah. you know, the votes are counted. That's, it is what yeah. it is. And uh, Aaron Black is to be congratulated yep. as the 2014 Sandover medalist. Well, to some of the highlights now of the 2014 season. It's been a terrific season. A lot of highlights. We're going to start with some of the marks of the season. Bison gets away, takes clean possession. Short pass over the top, then hacked out of mid-air. Oh, that 
is something very special. You talk about how clever he can be. Gives a hand pass off to Danaher. He'll need his left boot. Strikes one, straightens up and kicks a wonderful goal. Adams has gone forward. Bounces kindly for him. Snap shot from Adams. Dribbles, dribbles, dribbles through. What a goal. On the goal line, East Perth keep the ball in play. Foster sells the dummy and then snaps cleverly across the body. Great collect from Dan. Bounces a goal. And and it bounces through. Brilliant footy from Eddie Dan. Craig White, after neither of the Ruppin played a part in that, has gathered it, used all of his experience. On internal waters, spun out of trouble. This would be a terrific goal for Subiaco. What a kick, great play, Subi. Now Batterham, he looks to have the goods as well. He kicks it up towards centre half forward. What great vision. Adams takes the mark, hits the ground running. One bounce, he's going to run into an open goal score and hammers it home, he's got three. Back up comes from Abbott, hooks it across his body. That's an outstanding kick for one step. What an end! Oh, that's clever out of mid-air. Might be able to send something up there from the outer wing. Saunders back himself, Dan Hunt chasing. Saunders now after a couple of bounces, or kicks long into the goal square. That's gone through. Lester Smith is able to do that and sink the left boot into it. Heel is there under pressure from Peak. Oh, brilliant trap by Peak. That's the goal of the day. Rick Peak with his four. And McGuinness from long range. That's an outstanding shot on goal. Working back. What will he do with it, Yaron? A goal from the tightest of angles. Terrific stuff. Nicely worked from Shane Yaron. To open space, one on one there. Adams, Leishman, Adams with strength, or gets around, has a free kick now, free try, goal, gives it to no evasion, brings it back brilliantly. Schloit on the ground now, and he's forward of centre, Wolf giving chase, Schloit had great awareness, just shrugged him off, four bounces, he runs to 35 metres, needs to finish, and does. Yeah, well, he would have picked up pretty quickly that they were actually the goals of the year, but uh, some great ones there, there uh, Judge. We've seen a, pretty, a few good ones here today as well. Yeah, we have, we have. And, uh, oh, look, I mean, you know, today, days like today, goals are a premium, aren't they? It's tough conditions to get them, grand final, but also the conditions not, not easy underfoot. So, uh, you know, special goals can win, win your big games. Well, there were plenty of special marks during the season as well. Let's have a look at some of the aerial artistry, artistry now as we go to the highlights of the goals, the marks of the year. Floats it up towards Saunders, who plucks it out of the air. But look at that mark from Abbott rising to the top. It's towards the right half for Jones. Did well, really well. Good mark. Oh, that's a nice mark in all that. McGovern had the sit, had the right, and takes world. the mark as easy as that. Looked like he was losing his footing and was able to take the mark just in the right position for the ball to fall into his chest. 
Yes, nothing like a package of some of the spectacular marks of the year. And, uh, Judgey, just uh, coming back close to home, uh, the winner of the grand final today is pretty heavily disguised still. Oh, look, difficult to pick it at the moment, Lammy. I mean, I, I felt, as I said uh, in, in the break earlier, that uh, Subi just looked like they were taking some control about halfway through that quarter. I thought by the end of that quarter, the game had evened up again. So I don't think we can get a winner yet. This could go a long way into this game before we get a winner. Well, if anyone can shed some light on it, Rod Willett and Michael Genovese have been down into the rooms during halftime. Let's go down to them now for an update. Yeah, thanks very much, Phil. Well, we're just outside the actual Subiaco change rooms at the moment. Subiaco are very fired up. You, it's amazing how um, uh, how keen they are. They really think that their uh, momentum and that can get them going at the moment. Um, they're really sort of playing well. It's terrible conditions. Hopefully they'll improve as the game's on. But, Michael, they're, they're certainly really fired up for this next half. Yeah, you're exactly right. And one interesting thing that we did pick up in there, George Hampton spent uh, a lot of that break on a bike, so he's, he's, cut, he's trying to get over that hamstring strain that's happened out there, whether it was a strain, whether it was a tear, or whether it was a cramp. We'll find out at the start of this third quarter, as the boys are about to run out now, but Hampson spent a lot of that break on a bike, trying to warm it up, which to me indicates that they are going to run with him and give him at least one more crack to try and run it out, Rod. But the other interesting thing is the three big blokes. You would have thought that, you know, in these conditions, that maybe one of the sides may have gone in with a smaller player rather than going three talls. But all the three talls, or four talls from Reese Perth, are actually working out a right. You've had Smith so far that's, that's kicked two goals, and one he actually kicked as a rover almost off the top of the pack. So fantastic work by these big blokes. And, you know, Subiaco talls are, are being counteracting them really well as well. Exactly. McDougall, Stockley, Clancy Wheeler playing down back. He's had a, a, a fair tally of spoils so far. So it looks like that matchup is going to be crucial going into this uh, next two quarters of footy. It seems to have dried up, Rod. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too much rain. I checked the radar during the halftime break, and it looks like the worst of the rain is over. So things should dry out. This deck does drain really, really well. We do know that. So uh, we should be in for a cracking second half of footy. No, hopefully, mate. The, um, like you said, that they, they did say there was a little bit of rain maybe coming, so um, maybe i got a different radar to what, what you got. But uh, certainly the ground conditions, guys, are still really difficult. It's actually really slippery. The ball's still skidding, but it's going to be a real tight second half. So good to see the boys operating without an umbrella. It was the Royals by one point at quarter time. It's now a four-point ball game in favour of Subiaco with a half to play. And uh, for East Perth, Wilson being very good, sometimes unobtrusive, but four marks. He's had 14 possessions, 13 to Lee. Josh Smith, two terrific goals from uh, eight possessions. Seven to Sinclair, three marks in that lot. Butler's had 11 possessions. Johnson has taken a couple of marks, nine possessions. Seven to Hill, and Cadwallada has executed six disposals. For Subiaco, Bristow very busy with a 14. 16 to Horsley. Hampson, 12. Let's hope he can add to that tally because he has got an injury now which he is nursing and being treated for. One goal to him. One goal also to Fielding. He's had 11 possessions. Josh DeLuca, a great goal early in the game. 11 possessions. Nine to Hildebrandt. Latham has been busy with 10 and eight possessions to Wade Toomey. So there you go. Well, Darren and Judgey, Subiaco have had, I beg your pardon, East Perth have had 15 more kicks. The Lions have had 25 more handballs, and I'm not too sure that's been to their benefit all the time. Well, they, they balanced it up a bit better in that quarter. They had 55 kicks and 19 handballs in that quarter after having uh, 47 and 41 in the first. So, I mean, they've just they've balanced things up a bit there as far as their uh, kick to handball ratio, which is what they need to do. Inside 50 is exactly even. Uh, and centre breaks even as well. So not much in it. Consequently, not much in the game. And we talked about Stockley, 28 to 30 against their big men. That's a great effort by Frank Stockley. All right, well, let's, uh, let's reflect on uh, George Hampson. There he is out with the group. Well, that's a good sign to see that he's out there and uh, intending to play, but exactly what he's going to be capable of. You can see he grimaces there. So something, uh, soft tissue, has happened, and it's uh, pretty catastrophic. Just looking at the reaction there, it's uh, hard to envisage that he'll be playing much of a part going forward. Looks like a hamstring the way he's stopped oh, yeah. there, isn't it? Yep. Uh, it's suffering from the quad, but as you say, Darren, sometimes these soft t tissue injuries, when you compensate somewhere, you pick it up somewhere else. And, well, uh, you do, don't you? Yeah, and, and we watched him try to warm up along the boundary line. He wasn't moving that well, but uh, look, if he can find a way to get a little bit out of himself, he, um, he's starting on the ground, which is a good sign, so who knows, he might, uh, he might be able to get a little bit out of legs himself. Uh, pretty heavily strapped. Yeah, they've got the sticky tape out. Well, they're obviously going to roll the dice with him, find out early in the second half where they stand with him. I mean, just look at him Look at him walk there. I mean, Well, he, he looks to me to be a little bit apprehensive in the way he's walking there. Well, that's what I'm saying. But So I think what they're doing, we, we mentioned before, put him at full forward, see if he can just pinch a goal or two down there. 
you know, he's certainly not going to be able to get in any further up the ground than sort of that full forward line, I wouldn't have thought, because he just can't, he's not going to be able to run, I don't think so. He's not the sort of bloke he could play off, though. No, no, absolutely. I, I look at, look, and he's only got to sort of get one on one, doesn't he? He's clever enough to, 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 to make something happen. Let's uh, start with uh, going down to uh, Rod and his first bench. Yeah, thanks, Phil. All the East Perth boys are fit and raring to go. They know they've got to do a lot in this second quarter, uh, second half. Dean Calwallader, Stephen Payne, Jared Oakley, Nichols, Dom Sheet on the bench for East Perth. We'll get a chance to fire up again with the ball to be thrown up once more. So start of the third term. Delandi won it down. It went straight to Smith. He was tackled by Marnie. And part of the reasons those um, hit-outs are up too is those third man ups. They've been good at that today. Delahunty, goodness me, got plenty on that. Trying to get after it. Waters likes to sock it off the ground. Bounce straight back to Bristow. He has been busy. Good defensive mark to Blee. So Blee to the outer side. Fraser. One of the players who lost last year. Turns it straight over. It comes back from Stockley inside the attacking 50. Bowen tried to get a hand pass out. Hampson, that was clever. Josh DeLuca kicks around the body. How will it bounce? It'll bounce into the post. Minor score. It was good impact by Hampson then. Really good hands. Good pressure again by Subiaco to start this quarter. And those third man ups by Delahunty two in a row were really important. Yeah, as they were in the first half, you made the point. Butler... Precise kick out from the goal square. McGinnity just couldn't gather it. But uh, not a bad result for East Perth. Boundary throw in about 80 metres around from Subiaco's goals. We'll head down to Michael Genovese in just a moment to get the starting four on the Lions bench. On. Stockley negotiated uh, Johnson out the way. This will be a ball up. Let's go down to you now, Michael, for the Lions bench. Yeah, starting on the bench, Scott Worthington, Joel Latham, Sean Hildebrandt, and warming up on the bike is Christopher DeLuca. Johnson actually tapped it almost to himself. Socket out of midair. Butler just tried to get it away. Gathering it, Marnie. Nowhere to go. Boys, I jinxed it. It's starting to rain. You're the one who suffers more than we do for the moment, Michael. A little bit of wind around too, which is something different from the first half. So rainy, windy, typical grand final. Here's that the breeze is predominantly just blowing across the ground to the southern end of Subiaco. Stockley had the more telling tap. Trying to get it away. Eventually it's just rushed out of there towards half forward. Kinnis, he's working hard, emerging with it. An orthodox effort from Marnie underneath all of that. Toomey got it off his boot. Wolf, you'd expect him to be on the bottom of pack after pack. Here he is again. Umpire says, no, no, we'll be balling it up now. Just inside the centre square. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Gritty football in slippery conditions as the rain does tumble down again. And looks to be getting heavier. Both rucks out of touch once more. Butler, clever, goes back to Carter. Spirals the ball inside the forward 50. It'll be tough to mark now. No one could do so. Knocked forward again. Which way will this go? Smith working hard. Rumble just got a boot to the footy. So it over the boundary line, it'll be a throw in. Well played by Rumble. Yeah, it was really well done. Just get it out of that area, get it out of the corridor, get it wide. And he's found the boundary line, which is a bonus. Drew and on all of his experience. Latham's done a great job on Wolf, too. That's been a really yep. important matchup. Jared Schofield done his homework. Leach been trying to keep a tabs on Josh Hill. Secondary tap from Rumble. Back to Stockley. Now Horsley. High kick close to the boundary line. That was uh, millimetre perfect. As it bounced over safely for a boundary throw in. Yeah, the, definitely the breeze has picked up. He's flags above the electronic scoreboard and the outer side a lot more animated than they were in the first half. Stockley and Johnson. Stockley in particular would have been very grateful with the halftime break. Worked extremely hard. Johnson got it, however, to Clutterbuck. Managed to get a hand pass away eventually. Lathanyu. Bristow. It's a, it's a game of millimetres at the moment. And uh, that player there, McGinnity, was slung around a couple of times. But was over the line and out of bounds. It's going to be a tough slog. As uh, Jenna said, the rain coming down with a... It's not heavy, but just consistent at the moment. So, whereas it dried out for much of the second quarter, it's going to be very slippery again. 
hunting the footy there was Ash Smith. Gave it to Carter from one step. Kicks it up towards Sinclair. Nearly controlled the mark. Wolf a chance. He was front and square. Gets a hard working kick up towards uh, full forward. McGuinness was there. Got a hand to it. Got a boot to it. And it's hit the post, I think. Or has it gone through? It's gone through. I thought it had been made contact with the woodwork. It hasn't. So McKinnis manufacturing a goal that puts East Perth in front. It's come up at the five-minute mark of the third quarter. And Fraser McKinnis has now kicked two for the afternoon. Well, a good effort by him there. Again, a big fella having an impact. It wasn't so much at, uh, in the air. It was at ground level again. So good, good yardage by Wolf, wasn't it, to get it forward? Well, good recovery by, by McKinnis in the marking contest. and recovered well enough at ground level to get boot to ball and just scramble it through. Yeah, really well done. That's a big goal in a, in a low-scoring game, isn't it? It is, and he's a mobile big man. He's having an impact today. That's his second, I think. It is. On the West Coast yes, Eagles and, list. And we know the one that he kicked uh, into the man on the mark, so he could have had three. Yeah. At 37 games with Perth before under the alignment, headed across to the Royals. Ball in the middle of the ground. She, former Subiaco player, speaking of players, forced to move under the alignment, gets a kick to Butler. Another former Perth player. Spilled down towards Phelan of Subiaco. Got a kick away. No mark could be taken. There's desperate desperation in the middle of the ground at the moment. This is Marnie. Through boot on the ball. Punched forward by Chris DeLuca. Clever from McDougal. Down to Yaron. He'll elect a hand pass it forward. Great chance for Subi DeLuca. All running into trouble. Anderson, great defence. Can they conjure something up now? Subi East Perth. They've defended that really well. Subi Akko. Well, they'll be wondering how they didn't get a shot away on goal as Oakley Nichols looks to try to tap it down the line, sliding out and unable to keep it in was Leishman. It's now over the boundary line. It's really hard in these conditions to change direction or get away and it gives the tackler every opportunity and East Perth just didn't give up on that then. Well done. Well, they just had the one handball too many again, didn't they, Subi? Just over wanting that handball on and they should have kicked. Yeah, surprise, Chris DeLuca didn't put boot to board, allowed Anderson to affect the tackle. Good strong tackling again from McGinnity. You have to be ferocious if you wear the number 44 for East Perth. We saw Michael Swan wear it for a number of years. Now another real tough nut. Marnie's been in everything, hasn't he? He's on the bottom of every pack. He's, his work rate's been excellent for Serbiaco. Sheed, lovely kick away under real pressure. The punch came from Wheeler. Spills down to Payne. He gets a kick forward as well. Wheeler's underneath it once more. He marks defensively for Subi. Very steady influence, Clancy Wheeler, as he has been all day. It's had a very good season for the Lions. Kicks up towards the tall timber. McDougal in front. Fisted forward by Bristow. Chris DeLuca, half a chance. Wilson slick with his hand pass to McGinnity. Got the kick away. Knocking it to the uh, ground level there was Wheeler again. But well done by College, who kicks the ball forward. It skids through for a behind. They're under siege a little bit at the moment, so yeah, they are. Okay. You They've feel just like, lifted their tempo, East Perth, haven't they? You feel like they're uh, winning critical contests, getting those quick kicks forward. We've seen Wolf, McGinnity get good distance on the ball. Carter. I'll go down the corridor, Subi Waters underneath it. The punch was a solid one from Wheeler. He'll sit up again for Brennan. He'll put it back inside the forward 50 for the Royals. This will be important. No mark taken. Marnie's there again for Subi. Puts it towards the outer side. Butler backing back. Did well. Would have heard the footsteps and took the mark. Jeez, Boland, you want to make body contact there in the grand final, don't you? Yeah, he had to. Anderson had a goal-saving tackle moments ago. He's got it. Back inside the attacking 50. It's got to be a push. It is. Yeah, I don't think he'd get away with that many subtle was with that. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't very subtle. No. Subiaco to the outer side. Yaron collides with Anderson. Anderson was heading back with the flight of the football. It's socket along the line. Delahunty's wrapped up. Ball not coming out of there. It'll be thrown along. Well, that thing you're talking about there, Yaron gave the contest and Bowler needed to give before, yeah. didn't he? And great courage by both uh, East, East Perth players on both occasions, but yep. there's a chance to have uh, filled in a couple of blokes there, I reckon. McDougall wins the tap. Hovering over the top field and making a real contest of it. <laughs> and I mean that in the right. I mean that in the right way too. Yeah, that's right. There's a chance to fairly take body, which you've got to do in these big games. Boys, well, also the uh, dark clouds are starting to roll in, so the lights have been switched on, uh, which makes it a whole lot brighter down on the uh, oval. Great work there by Carter to work the ball forward along the boundary line. In fact, it was McGinnity again. Well, these conditions we thought would suit him, and he's been one of the ones in the 
with a contested footy that's really applied the pressure in the opening part of this quarter. Now nine and a half minutes old. Good around the stoppages. Here we are again. Oatley Nichols, McDougal, they were both in there. Bristow it is that gets the ball onto his boot. Yaron wrestling again. Waters got an unkind bounce. Cadwallader dragged the ball back through his legs. And a congested bit of play again can only be sorted out with a bounce, surely. No, that appears well done. Good perseverance by Marnie. Workman like kick up to the half forward line. Boland trailing Anderson to the footy. Anderson taking it to the boundary line did well. Boland's one that's got to got to find a little bit, doesn't he? He's the key yep. forward. Uh, he's he's going to get his three or four chances. There's no doubt about that. He needs to make sure he hits the scoreboard. Seems to be moving okay. So there's no nothing apparent that there's a. Well, he was uh, okay early, but he's he's been a bit quiet since. Yep. Needs to step up. Getting a hand to it, Sinclair McDougal. The second ref, it was pretty good. Fires a hand pass out to Phelan. Phelan's not so good, but Hildebrandt makes light of it. Can he keep this inside the field of play? He can, and a great mark taken down there almost by Delahunty. He gets up claiming the mark, and I don't blame him. Looked like a mark to me. Gee. Pretty good effort. He seemed to steady it, control it. Oh, he oh, had that yes. all the way down. Yes, it's a mark. That was a mark. He's been good. He sure has been. He's, he's often been, been that third man up at the stoppages as well. Not on this occasion, Sinclair... Double palms it toward the boundary line again. So the Ruckman will set up. It's at right half forward flank, about 65 metres around from Subiaco's goal. Similar to the first quarter, isn't it? The East Perth come out, they've been on yep. top, and Subiaco's been able to nullify them and get it back to a one-on-one. -on -one. Rain continues to tumble down. It's been a grey old afternoon, but the footy's been fantastic. It's trying to emerge with it. Almost kicking in danger against Marnie. Is Perth happy to get it away to the outer side? McInnes up against Wheeler. Ball over. Not just the boundary line, but the fence too. Well, well, maybe the conditions have been a blessing for yeah. Yeah, him keeping the game so even. Some great matchups all over the ground, isn't yeah. there? Like Wheeler and well, McInnes. There's, just no, there's not an easy possession, is there? Yeah. Uh, they're just some fantastic one-on-ones that have been going for the duration of the game. Ball spun back in. Sinclair. A telling tap, but his hand to it. Bristow was able to pick it up. Latham for Subiaco. Bounces towards Waters. He's surrounded by Royals. Blee got in his robe, was content to set back towards the boundary line. We worked that pretty well in the end. It's hard in these conditions, but just being clean is so important. Waters yep. just takes that ball. It's a, another 30 metre kick yep. forward. Got to be as clean as you can, even though the conditions are really hard. Nathan Blee, one of a number of players with AFL experience. In six games with Port Adelaide. Coming up, Wilson. The young Eagles spill down to Feel and kicked a terrific goal earlier. Feel and will kick towards goal. Oh, oh. oh, that is something terrific! What a wonderful effort for his second. And Subiaco respond. They were under real pressure. But we... Subi have been able to get back to a four-point advantage. Twelve and a bit minutes gone in the third term. He's kicked a couple of good goals, hasn't he? We, we the know one, the one in the <laughs> second quarter and that one there. I mean, that was just a terrific yeah. effort by. We the know he's a goal beautiful was magnificent. Kick. We know he's a beautiful kick. He just took three steps, then steadied, and that was as deliberate as you want. Straight through the middle. Really good contact. We know he's a beautiful kick. That that uh, you can see how excited the players were too. That is a real team. Well, that's lifter a team lifter, there. isn't it? Yeah. During grand finals, you get opportunities to do certain things that lift the rest of the team. Chris Phelan certainly took that opportunity with both hands. How will the rest of his teammates react? How will East Perth react? Take it in the middle. Hurried kick forward again by Phelan. Comes to Horsley. Fortuitously in the end. Kicks it up forward. Oh, here's a chance for Bond. Oh, he just kicked that in the middle of the foot. He tried to kick it the one end of it. Waters is underneath it. Gets past Hildebrandt. Carter goes to ground. Waters another chance. Oh, was he high. taken high? Looked as though he yeah. was. The whistle is gone. So it wasn't, wasn't very good by Carter then, was it? Uh, no. Carter tried to kick the ball off the ground. He could have taken possession. Got a 40-metre kick forward. Really, really disappointing. But um, the effort by uh, DeLuca... Young Josh DeLuca, who came out and just tapped the ball back to Horsley, was excellent. And Boland had a real opportunity then to kick that one around the body. He, he had more time than he realised uh, normally would have kicked that. But um, again, Ward has put his head over it and he gets the free kick. He's been busy, yeah. yeah, he's been really workmanlike. He's, uh, his pressure's been excellent. As you say, Darren, on just on a few occasions, he's had opportunities. He hasn't handled the ball cleanly. But he gets a chance now. 
He'll kick from well inside 50. A few little skip-like steps. He gets to about 48. Didn't really get a good point purchase on that. Sprays it to the right. Hey, 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 gone through for a behind. Let's get into Rod Willett. I think uh, Pat McGinnity in a bit of strife, Rod. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, done a uh, finger on his left hand. He's actually uh, just sort of nursing it there at the moment. They're actually trying to get him down the race, but uh, um, at the moment they might try and fix him up here because they want him back on. East Perth are away. Cadwalder down the commentary wing. Kicks into space at right half forward. Howard bounce. Hill battles with Sumi. Hill and Sumi, they overrun the footy. Hill tries to pick it up off the deck. He's under real pressure now. Subiaco had the numbers. It's knocked back. Clutterbuck wanted it desperately. Collides with Latham. Sure. Over the boundary line for a throw in. What's different about that to the kick they played earlier? But his legs taken out, didn't he? Yeah, I, I just love the way that, that uh, the contest, both players going really hard at it. The chance back the one-on-one -on -one between you know between Hill and Toomey was a ripper. Ball in again. Stockley strongly back towards the boundary line. Horsley gathered the footy. Clutterbuck tackles him over. Oh there's a big push and shove again between these two. Last time inside 50, you'd be a bit nervous as a backman running beside Hill, wouldn't you, when you're one-on-one -on -one with him, thinking, oh, gee. Nah, Toomey did it really yeah. well. When he went to ground, I thought he was going to be in a yeah, bit of trouble. Was, yeah. Oh, air swing from Waters. Had the opportunity to get it away again to Della Hunty, who will put it into space in the middle of the ground. Out after it, bowl, and he'll get there first. Surging forward to Zmarni. That's where the kick should go. In oh, fact, it's a hand pass it. with not enough on it. Oh, it allows Payne to intercept. Subiaco blow another opportunity. Blees there, just puts it on the boot, towing it along the ground. Nicely worked from East Perth in the end, but Subi ruining what should have been at least an inside 50, if nothing more. If you could have one criticism of Subi, I reckon a few times today they've done that. He needed to kick that ball in bowl and not try and handball it. Uh, no doubt. I, I thought he was playing it pretty well. I, I didn't think it was a handball. I thought it was a kick. You give the kick over into the space. Yeah. Delahunty wins the tap. Tracks to the boundary line, beaten to it there by Wilson, but Delahunty gets another chance, made some contact with it. Hand pass up to Delahunty from Bristow, who kicks it forward. Waters again. He's a bit well, further well, out than last time. I'd be giving him off here because he was. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, oh, that's a short, risky pass. Vacuumed up pretty well, too, by Josh DeLuca. Gives it to Chris. Chris didn't get much on the kick. Coming out to meet it, there was Anderson under a lot of pressure. Hampson goes to ground. Umpire will ball this up. Well, of the I'll be options. happy that, locking it up there at the top of the square. But of the options on. open to bowl him there a moment ago, there were a couple of options, three options probably. He took the wrong one. But I mean, yeah, was... the first option was to kick. Oh, yeah. Kick only, not to handball. Yeah, the, the, of the three options, the only <laughs> one was to handball. The other two were to kick. A long, B short. <laughs> Boland, Boland now is in the hands of the trainers and doesn't look too great. That's him there. He wants to get back in the action, just shrugging off the trainers. He's got a bit of a whack in the right eye by the look of it. Rain tumbling down. McDougal tried to hack it out of uh, the area with his foot. Knocked out by Wilson. In fact, he hand-passed it out wide. Waters gets there first for Subiaco. Got clear. hand passed to Bristow. who is in all sorts of bother. Hurried kick by Josh DeLuca. Straight into traffic, however. Brendan Lee, half a kick. Picked up, though, well by McInnes. He gave it on then to Blee, and Blee a good kick along the ground and finds the refuge of the boundary line. Let's go down to Rod Willett. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, looks like this finger is worse than what we thought. I don't think it's a dislocation. I actually think it's a break. They're actually trying to strap him up at the moment. They're giving him some sort of assistance. He's in a fair bit of pain. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he comes back. We're speaking about Patrick McGinnity, of course, from East Perth. This ball's tumbled down the line and over for another throwing. Jeez, it's been a great few minutes by Subiaco. Okay, their pressure, they've kept it in their forward half. Well, it's a repeat of that first quarter, isn't it? It certainly is, and, and you can see the, the toll it's starting to take on players. This game will open up a little bit. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I reckon um, Subiaco just seem to be hanging really tough at the moment. They're winning the important one-on-ones. Five-point advantage at the moment. It's never got more than 11 points. The difference between these sides throughout the entire game still bouncing around, eventually just hacked out of midair. Comes back to Toomey, puts it inside the forward 50. Bowen was there. Anderson got the fist of the footy. Fraser gathers for East Perth. McDougal just has to tap to them. It's down again towards Butler. Oh, waiting for it. Lee was tackled. Spills out to Horsley. What a goal. The skipper, he strikes. As we close in the time on in the third term.
Well, as the rain continues to tumble down, that is a bright moment for Subiaco this afternoon. Kyle Horsley puts his name on the goal kickers list. Goodness me. Great just, stuff for Subi. He's been good for him today, isn't he, Horsley? He's just been brilliant. all class. All class. Yep. And the pressure here, another re-entry from Toomey. Waters has had a really important 10 minutes. And that is just a clean hit. As soon the as other thing that had happened is McGinley was running with Horsley. He's yeah. come off the ground. Just gives... Well, and Horsley's been winning the ball anyhow, but he had McGinley playing yeah. much closer attention to him earlier in this quarter. Yeah. Gets, uh, gets freed up now with him off the ground. And Horsley's a goal kicking midfielder. He's kicked 14 this year. I think that's his 15th, 15th yep. for the year. Stopped it, won the tap, but College got there first. He punts it to the front edge of the square. Horsley's there again, slotting the ball along the ground. He just makes right, the right decisions, does Kyle Horsley. Two lines combining out there Bristow and Hildebrand. It's Hildebrand who gathers it. Bristow ran with him, giving him instructions. On the lead, there was McDougall. Waters, hand pass to Chris DeLuca. Oh, he's clear. He gets onto the right boots. DeLuca, can he bring it back? He can. Two quick goals oh. by Subiaco. And for a left footer, that's a fantastic strike on his right foot. He's got two himself, Chris DeLuca. He's had a real oh, impact Oh, yeah, today. the DeLucas contribute week in, week out. And that's the uh, quickest goals in succession we've seen in the 2014 Grand Final. A handy little buffer now to the Lions. Seven goals, 11.53. They lead East Perth, 5.6.36. Well, that's a big break in this game. Points. 17 points is a big lead in this sort of game and these, these sort of conditions. So, uh, you know, it's a good effort by Subi. They just... As we said, East Perth early in this quarter, we thought, oh, they're, they're doing all the, all the, all the momentum, had all the momentum and doing all the, all the uh, charging, and then Subi have just rested, arrested the uh, ascendancy back again. This lead, the biggest of the game so far, 17 points. How will East Perth respond? Clutterbuck to Shee, kicks around the body, running onto it, attempting to knock it forward. Whitney was Sinclair. He'll get it back from Wolf Sinclair. Unorthodox, but effective. He'll put it towards full forward. The punch at the back came down from Worthington. Lafanu, oh, hand pass, stolen away. McKinnis snaps around the body, and they respond, the Royals. McKinnis has got his third. They will not go away. What a game of footy we've got in the 2014 WAFL Grand Final. And if Subiaco go back and look at this tape, there's five or six times today where they handball oh, it. That's a really yeah. good spoil. Worthington's been excellent today. You just need to bash that on the boot. Oh, yeah. That goes 40, 50 metres well, towards the boundary. Even if he kicks it, he's penalised. If he kicks, and it's, you know, kicks it out of bounds and he's penalised here, the ball's 40 metres from goal, it's on an angle, you know, you're even probably happy to concede that, rather than concede one like that, which, is, which has killed him. It's just a goal straight back when they look like they were in total control. The frustrating thing for Jared Schofield is that he addressed it at quarter time. We're now halfway through the third quarter and they're still making the same obvious error. Clutterbuck got a hand pass, not further by Butler, but anticipating it was Phelan. Kicks the ball up toward the half-forward line. Going to ground was Fraser. DeLuca might have oh, got one oh. high. He went down. Cadwallader, did he get one high? Yeah. The umpire saw the second of them. Yeah, he missed the first one. The umpire yes. really definitely got a high one. He yeah, should have got a free kick there, but uh... Cadwallader just settling things down for the Royals. Put his body on the line. It wasn't his fault that he, the first one was missed. Beautiful kick to Lee. Lee wastes no time, but the blind kick did not favour Callum Sinclair and Stevenson. Another of those Subiaco steady defenders. It's been good. On the lead, Bristow. This bike has been good too. Oh, yeah, fantastic. He just, he just doesn't stop now. He's got feeling in the middle of the ground. That's covered now. On the lead came Yaron. The kick didn't particularly accommodate him. Now the Royals have got the numbers. Payne. Subiaco player down. Lee has time to look up field, weigh up his options. McKinnis couldn't make this one stick. Worthington with him. McKinnis comes up with a footy. Hand pass to no one in particular. Through went Stevenson again. Dispossessed. Somehow the ball found its way to the hands of Latham. He's kicked the ball up over the centre of the ground and Carter goes back. Who's that down? Is it not yeah, that's Yaron, Yaron, I reckon. It has not yep. moved. Yaron on the outer side. Carter to open spaces on centre wing. Clutterbuck got into the space. Now Chris DeLuca, perseverance personified, well takes the ball over. Well done, Chris DeLuca. No, Yaron's up. His first movement was to get up and start running. <laughs> I said he hadn't moved. And the, the moment I said it, the commentary <laughs> cursed. St this time working a treat for a player. Got Stung up. him into action and <laughs> ready to go. Oh, well, hopefully it fires him up. Throwing back in. Again, bounces down. Socket forward. Anywhere will do at the moment for the Royals. College got boot the ball. Made himself about 30 metres or so. And there'll be a throw in at right half forward. 
just a fantastic contest and a battle of wills everywhere and players are starting to look tired but no one has taken a back, backward step today. Subiaco, three goals to two five. so far in this turn. It was almost dangerous as Dougal slid through. Josh DeLuca now with Hildebrandt, dual premiership player with the Lions. Good defence came again from Brennan, got in front. Yaron's OK as he gets boot to ball. Marking Hampson. No problem with the hamstring right now, but he'll have an option of going short because I'm not sure if you've got the hamstring issue, you'll be able to travel this distance, would you, Ken? Well, it's his right leg he's kicking with, and it's his left leg he's got the crook hammy in, so... Uh... Yeah, when you, I mean, when you try to extend, yeah, you put a bit of pressure on the opposite yeah. leg, I can tell you. Yeah, I, I think that distance might just be a bit much if he has got a serious hamstring problem. If I was out there, I'd be still leading and calling for the ball. Already he's going to torpedo here, is he? No. No, the drop kick from Hampson. He liked it the moment it left the boot. No worries. Got nothing wrong with him. George Hampson. <laughs> he's got his second. Uh, Subiaco fans love it. There's no problems. No hamstring worries at all, despite the strapping. Nice goal. And Subiaco, they get another. They're eighth now. 8 11 59 of the line. Experts 6 6 42. Funny it doesn't hurt, isn't it, when you kick a goal? <laughs> it sort of disappears, off, doesn't it? Uh, sprints off the no, good effort. Good effort by him. And we said at half time, if he could go forward and he could have yep. an impact and just get him one on one inside 50, which happened then. Good quick ball movement. Got it in there. Really well done by Hildebrand again through the middle and yep. Yaron to win that one-on-one -on -one contest. Yep. And that's a great finish. So you look at the goals this quarter have just all been quality. And Darren, that quick kick by Yaron just to get the ball up into the uh, attacking 50 quickly is the key. Great effort this by Phelan. He won the footy and gave a great hand pass off to Bristow. He kicks to a contest, a big contest. The ball buried under bodies almost immediately. He hit the deck. Trying to come up with it was Anderson. He was no way up for him. Good to see Boland jump at the ball really hard then, take the pack with him, bring the ball to ground. He's got to continue to do that. Still seven, well, back to 17 points. Here's a chance for Bristow. Is he held without it? The umpire says no. The umpire says play on. Can Wallander, well, oh, he did it brilliantly. Managed to get it to his boot up towards the wing. Lee is there with him, Toomey. Fires a hand pass off to Payne. Now back to Lee. Lee so composed, just waited until he can get it off by foot to college. Well, well done, Bristow. Like he, he was in that Gee, contest. He hard, run he? hard to get the mark, hold him up. Just quality. The college kick. Out in front of Smith. He's got a couple to beat. Pumps a hand pass off back to Payne. Payne yes! from a step. Up towards the forward pocket. Hill was the target. Leachman doing a good job there with him. Still the ball in play. Now Subiaco players just do some body work to get the ball over. Need a bit more out of Hill and Oakley Nichols and those types at the moment. Yep. The, the Subiaco defenders have done really well on them. You can see where the ball is in relation to the East Perth goals. This is an important stoppage, especially given that it's 27 and a half minutes into the quarter. No one's got Lee in the goal square by himself. Clever little give off in the ruck there by Johnson. Wolf went to ground with the footy. The umpire calls for it. Yeah, you'd imagine the siren will go any minute now with... Uh, there's been a couple of goals kicked, but uh, you want to really hang tough here. Can't be a long quarter. Can't be a long quarter. Johnson again getting the ball into Butler, who fires a hand pass out to College. And post. he's hit the post again. There have been, I reckon, three or four posts today. I think that's four. Four for the afternoon. Yep, that is four. And College is second behind, and that was the opportunity they needed to grab. It's a really important lead, isn't it? That... That lead, 16 points, is, uh, is is really important. If that gets back to 10, you, you, you're well in, well close enough to have a crack at it. Toomey, off hands, heads back towards the boundary line. Fraser just keeps it in now. It was tough, so it can't be a mark. That's clever play. Strong defence as well from Leishman, getting the fist of the footy and seeing it over the boundary line. Plays with a lot of confidence, Leishman, doesn't he? Just all done their job a really good there. player. Just all done their job, beating their man. Really standing tough. 16 points the margin. We close in on three-quarter time. Sinclair tapped it back into the corridor. Bristow's there once more. Said that a few times today. Beyond defensive 50 and a strong mark to Delahunty. He's been busy too. Stood up, hasn't he? Often the third man up, Delahunty today. This time he takes the mark and puts it down the line. Leap at the back, unable to mark. Blee went a long way up into the air, but it's off hands and again. Our boundary umpire will be forced to put it back into play. Nathan Bleed, I mentioned before, six games in Port Adelaide. This is 40th game of WAFL football today. It'll be 
spun back in. Sinclair once more with a tap. Socket along the ground by Butler. Trying to merge with it. College. Woof. Got away from the tackle. Gets boot to ball. Will be in the centre square. Smith. Couldn't mark under pressure. Hildebrandt slides out. Got it to Latham. Subiaco again a chance. Toomey down the outer side. He'll head towards centre half forward. Courage showing. Ball spills to ground. Still a chance for Subi. It comes to Delahunty. Got a hand pass away. Butler underneath it. His hand pass back to Phelan. There's lines queuing up for it. Walters receives it. He'll kick the goal. They've just made the most of every opportunity. Reese Waters, <laughs> that's a telling goal for Subiaco. It's a very telling goal, and that's nearly a, that's nearly a match winning lead, but they overhandled again there. They handballed a couple of times, they got away with it, kicked a goal. But if I was Jared Schofield, I'd be ripping my hair out prior to that goal being kicked, thinking, why would you have handballed? Why didn't you kick it? It's like watching Port last night, isn't it? They just kept handballing, but yep. their run yep. has been fantastic. And um, Bristow's coming back on in the middle. I think he's had his first 30 second rest for the day by the amount of times he's been under the pack. But Hildebrandt, Horsley, DeLuca, Hampson, and now Waters have all kicked really important goals. Just 22 when we thinking, points, the biggest margin of the game now. Yeah, just when we were thinking at the other end, Clint, that uh, they had to be tight and not allow a scoring opportunity for East Perth. They get one at the other end. Phelan gets the clearance again for Subiaco. Oh, at the back of the pack. He's red hot at the moment. Chance now for DeLuca. Josh DeLuca, great hand pass to Chris. He couldn't get it off to anyone in particular. Bowling was there, but I think there's a free kick being given. Yep, yep. Uh, to East Perth. Yeah, I think so. I bit, saw that. Yeah, bit silly by Boland, I yep, thought. Yep, Boland needs to make better decisions at the moment. That wasn't smart. Anderson goes looking there for Sinclair. Composed is Delahunty. Back up toward full forward. Hanson's there, and that's a good result. Out of bounds is what they wanted, Subiaco. Look at the score clock. 31 and a half. Who would have thought? Geez, their small players up forward have had an impact. Uh, Waters has been really impressive been this busy, quarter. The, the two Delucas. The Delucas. Yeah, they've got and a good then mix. Hampson's kicked his two. They've got a really good mix up there at the moment. Sinclair wins the tap. Hampson gets first hands on it. Almost handed it off then to Phelan and then somehow found himself back in possession. Only seconds away, you'd think. Clint, you can take us through to the siren. Hampson remains out there despite the problems with his hamstring. Both rucks missed it. And Subi get another. Waters kicks around the body. He's missed everything. It's touched. So it's not out of bounds on the forward. It'll be thrown in at right foot forward. Geez, they could pitch another one here. Yeah, it's the flag a... might be uh, flying from Leaderville Oval tonight. But I don't want to get too, but on the Subi side. too early. <laughs> yeah, there'll be one flying there tonight. <laughs> it's definitely there this <laughs> on the Subi no side. Tenets, exactly. It's been a remarkable season. Eighth last year. Down again, Bristow deserves a goal! Oh. He's got one too! Look at the broad smile across Bristow's face. What an important goal right before three-quarter time. The Lions, they believe that the 2014 Premiership could be theirs. I know it's a long way from home, but Bristow would almost hang, around, hang the medal around his neck. He's oh, been no, unbelievable. Think, yeah. he, yep. uh, he's been on the bottom of it, everything. He's been... He's tackling, he's chasing, he's first gives, he's, and that's just reward for hard hard work. And how's the quality of their goals this quarter? The, yeah. whole, the whole, the last six of them have all just been outstanding. If it comes to a toss-up, Darren, with the Simpson, that goal I think is going to last in the memories of the uh, umpires because that was, from a stoppage under enormous pressure, just a brilliant goal. Restart. Can't be long now. Stockley, I thought you were going to take us through the siren clean. Stockley's hurry <laughs> kick, Payne tracks the footy, gives it off to Wilson. Hurry kick again, lands into the arms of Subiaco. I think going, starting to go their way at the moment. We said it wouldn't be a very long quarter. It's going to be a very long 34 quarter. minutes. Oh, we've got the hourglass I reckon, again. I reckon the rain's got into the uh, time clock somehow. <laughs> Latham drives it up to the half forward line. Boland contest was a good one. Payne, though, ends up with it. I oh, gave it straight back to Boland. They might sneak another one. Here's Hampson. The ball gets behind him. Under pressure now, East Perth. DeLuca was there. That's Chris DeLuca. Hampson looking to do something brilliant. Pushed off it by Belie and almost a touchdown by. Jacob Brennan. Courageous effort by oh, him. He's, he's down again now. I'll tell you what. He, he's going to rip that muscle <laughs> off the bone. Oh, yeah. he, he will be a very sore boy for some weeks after this grand final. You can rest assured. Stockley. 
Phelan was lowermost in the pack. Yaron oh. tried to hack it off the ground. It was dangerous too. In the end, it was Brennan who got a boot to it and forced it through for their sixth rush behind. But aren't they under pressure, East Perth? The siren cannot come uh, quickly enough for them, Clint. That's if it's still working. <laughs> We're wondering at the moment. Carter. 35 minutes. Has there been a blood rule? I think or? it's been eight minutes since we thought it wouldn't go much longer. Since Lammy wanted you to finish the quarter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd have been accused of hogging the microphone if I'd done that. The ball's on the outer side of the ground. This is Wolf. Can East Perth get a late goal? They need one. Need one desperately. Cad Walder. He'll put it long inside the attacking 50. Unable to mark was Hill. Leishman again does well. He's been so, so on today. Toomey beyond defensive 50. He turned it over. Taken again by Sheed. Pops it into Hill. Perhaps they can get a goal before the three-quarter time siren. Or maybe just afterwards with the ball in the hands of Josh Hill. Well... Very, they very important it. kick, this one. If you can go back and nail it, at least they'll have something to go to bit the of huddle, huddle with. Because they have been smashed in the second half of this quarter. Josh Hill, perhaps, to keep East Perth in this grand final. The kick on its way, it's narrow. He misses. The Royals needed so, so much more. That's three-quarter time. It was a quarter dominated by the Lions, and they've got one hand on the Premiership trophy for 2014. Subiaco 10 12 72, East Perth 6 8 44. Kick up towards uh, full forward. McGuinness was there, got a hand to it, got a boot to it, and it's hit the post. I think it's gone through. It's gone through. Still down to Phelan. Kicked a terrific goal earlier. Phelan will kick towards goal. Oh, oh that is something terrific! Back towards the boundary line. Horsley gathered the footy. Clutterbuck tackles him over. Oh, there's a big push and shove again between these two. It's down again towards Butler. Oh, waiting for it. Lee was tackled. Spills out to Horsley! What a goal! The skipper, he strikes! He'll put it towards full forward. The punch at the back came out from Worthington. Lafanu, oh, here. Well, grand finals are all about taking your opportunity. Subiaco did it in that third quarter. They conceded the first goal, kicked by Fraser McKinnis. After that, they kicked six goals to the Royals, uh, one other one. So uh, have possibly broken it up. You don't want to start celebrating uh, too early, but a great quarter of footy by uh, Subiaco. They, pl they played premiership footy in that term. I think easily their best footy for the afternoon. Darren, you said this game will open up. Maybe Subi made it open up during that, that quarter, but uh, it, it certainly hasn't sort of uh, cast itself wide open at this stage, has it? No, they were under siege in the first five to ten minutes, and um, East Perth weren't able to take their opportunities, and, and they just seemed to get... It was almost when the rain, you called the rain, came out, and uh, away they went again. But their goals were quality, and, and the other thing that was quality about their goals was three midfielders in Hildebrand, Horsley and Bristow kicked them. They did, and uh, they've been brilliant all day. Judgey, what, is, uh, what does East Perth do now? I think they're in trouble, Lammy. I think, I th honestly think Subi have got this game won. I think that with the commitment they've shown there then, if they play with the same commitment in the last quarter, it would need a massive turnaround for East Perth to win this game. They've got them on the back foot. They've got them on the ropes. And I think, you know, this first 10 or 15 minutes in this last quarter, if they can play with that same kind of intensity, Subiaco, I think the premiership's theirs. All right, well, let's uh, look at the goal scorers. So there's a quarter to go, but as it stands at the moment, Fraser McInnes is the chief goal scorer on the ground with three for the Royals, two to Josh Smith and one to McGinnity, who's under in an injury cloud himself at the moment for the Lions. Two apiece to Chris DeLuca, Hampson and Phelan, and one each to Bristow, Waters, Horsley and Josh DeLuca. Uh, Brendan Lee continues to lead from the front for uh, East Perth, but uh, struggling to find effectiveness with his uh, possessions. Wilson in defence has been prominent. Butler uh, has done his work, of course. College, 10 possessions. Hasn't been able to find the major opening. Cudwallader has used the ball well. He's had uh, 10 possessions. Payne has been in and out of the match. Josh Smith with his two goals has been pretty good. And Sinclair, a lot of good ruck work to go with his nine possessions. Uh, but over the page, uh, this tells a real story. 23 to Briscoe with one goal, one. 23 to Horsley with a goal alongside his name. 20 to Phelan with two good goals alongside his name. Two goals to George Hampson playing under Duresh. Uh, Josh DeLuca, Waters, Hildebrandt and Latham have all been prominent. And uh, 
You look at the uh, inside 50s uh, in that quarter. Well, it's still Subiaco only by a couple, but it was the uh, the quality of the, those inside 50s that has given them this break at the moment. They took a slight advantage in the centre breaks because they were even at half time and they've just got a slight advantage there. And that's it, how important that is on a day like today when you're playing in conditions like this. If you can just get the ball going forward for you, it's not a bad starting point. It's a massive discrepancy in marks too, isn't it? 47 yep. to 18. Uh, and, and we've seen Subiaco get their goals from front and centres, not from marks, not from leads, but more from uh, that hard work at the front front of the the, uh, the contest. Well, I'm betting that uh, the Subiaco three-quarter time huddle is pretty pumped. Let's go down we there now. Let's make sure that they are now paddocking us yep. and bringing everyone up. If we need, we need to understand when we may need to roll one back and keep behind. We don't want to be defensive, but we don't want to get burnt on fast ball out the back. Yep. You must make sure you understand that, yes? Okay. Must make sure our one-step kicking has been fantastic. Planted foot, long ball back in has been fantastic. But every moment now, every moment now is critical. Every moment now is this game. You make one mistake, it could cost us. You understand that? This is a game that's still up for grabs. It's not over, and you've got to have that into. We kick three goals. We win oh, the grand final. Michael uh, Wayne Orza, the, the assistant there, is really, really fired up, but he makes a very good point that this game is not over yet. Exactly, and they still think it's in the balance, although the, the lead is 28 points, which is the biggest lead of uh, the game so far. They don't expect the Lions to try and slow things down. They, that's one thing that was mentioned by Jared Schofield in the huddle. They'll still continue to take the game on. Now, their kick-to-handball ratio has been, uh, has been um, uh, one of the talking points of the game so far. You look at a guy like Orza, he's had the 22 dis disposals, and he's had... 19 of them have been kicked. So to put that into perspective, they're, they're getting it long. It means inside 50s and it means scoreboard pressure from Subiaco. Now, just a couple of injury reports uh, so far in the game. Of course, George Hampson, we thought he was done and dusted with a torn hamstring when he came off. I didn't know you could strap a hamstring up, but he's proof of that. Kicking that goal from on 50 metres. And the other one for East Perth is Patrick McGinnity. So he's hurt his hand. He's had it heavily strapped up. He's probably had it jabbed up. Whether or not he comes back on uh, is, remains to be unseen, but I'm not sure how much impact he'll come. As I'm looking at him now, he's going towards the bench so whether or not he plays an impact uh, in the remainder of this grand final is yet to be seen boys but a cracking contest ahead of us I'm sure No, oh, it certainly is a cracking contest thanks for that Michael let's go down to Rod Willard who's got East Perth coach Brian Dawson Brian you just pleaded with your players you asked them to look each other in the eye and not give up but it's going to be harder than that oh it's tough you know but sometimes you've got to stare defeat in the face and uh, you know you, sometimes you you don't go there so we'll see what happens they just got on top of you in that second uh, that that quarter then didn't they Oh, they won the ball around the stoppages really well. It wasn't pretty, wasn't fancy, but they were uh, harder inside than we were. Thanks, Dawson. Good luck. Hildebrandt soccers the ball forward. Good tap on by Josh DeLuca to Phelan. He kicks it inside, attacking 50. Anderson did pretty well there, but couldn't get it out of the area. Yaron, an important kick, which made about 25 metres, and Subiaco got it deep in their forward line within 30 seconds of the quarter starting. Interesting that uh, East Perth started with two extra defender defensively that quarter, which gave Subiaco leaving uh, Toomey free up the other end. So I think they'd be wanting to get it as one-on-one -on -one as well, they could. Well, exactly. You can't, I can't think of them in the game doing that. Delahundy got a kick. Oh, it ricochets out to Josh DeLuca. He couldn't bend it back enough. It's gone over the line. Out of bounds on the fall. We see uh, George Hampson is down there on the bike, keeping himself warm. So he's certainly got a part to play yet in the final quarter of the 2014 Grand Final. Ash Smith, the Royals, they need something quickly to stay in this game. He'll run beyond defensive 50 and thump it towards the outer wing. One-on-one -on -one battle there. Goes behind Leishman, socket forward by Cadwalder. Having to go to it, Rumble showed real courage. Coming in the opposite direction, Cadwalder. Leishman couldn't get rid of it. Wolf dives in over the top, tried to get a hand pass out. Ball locked in. Umpire well, will send it into the sky. Well done, Darren Rumble. Could have stayed with his man, decided to come off, made that contest. They had free free space there. It was courageous. Most experienced. Back, their back one's been good, hasn't it, today? Subi. Subi out go. Player out there. 17 finals for Darren Rumble. Of course, four premierships already next to his name as the ball's back over the boundary line. Every contest becomes an important one, important one. Every time they can defend, Horsley wins that ball, gets it forward. Everyone is important from now to the finish. Do not want to give East Perth, who will be very fit, had the, had the week off, they'll run it out. Sinclair got it down. Shoveled forward by Wheeler. Waters just sockers it across half forward. Kicked forward again by Hildebrand. 
Oh, the ball getting past the Luca. Oh, just stepping foot for a moment. Fraser under real pressure, slapped it out the back. Yarren kicked it straight into Bowen. It ricochets back towards Hildebrand. He gets tackled by Payne. Yarren goes in again. Anderson slaps it out. They still haven't got rid of it, East Perth. It's with Hildebrand. He'll get it out towards Yarren. He'll kick towards the top of the goal square and then rushed over for a minor score. Nicely worked in the end. Good stuff to Fraser. Rod thanks, Willis downstairs. Yes, thanks very much, Clint. Well, you can just see Paddy McGinnity there. He's on the bench. Uh, they've made the decision with him. He's uh, not going to come back. He's actually got a broken uh, left finger on the left hand. So uh, very disappointed. And they need him in there. He's an in and under player. They're going to miss him in this last quarter. Yeah, they certainly are. They're missing him already. Here's Horsley. Gives it to Field and he's on the 50. This is not beyond Chris Field, although he just can't get that one online. Yeah, McGinnity was one of their main contested ball winners. Thanks, uh, now without him out there, Thanks, it's not just a, a rotation. They are down, but a, a quality ball winner. The margin now is 30 points. And a bloke who's, who's suited to these conditions. Yeah, Brennan, a good kick in. McKinnis sliding along the ground to take the mark. It wouldn't be his decision not to come back. That's on. Fine, no, that's fine. no, no, he didn't look too impressed, I've got to say. So McKinnis goes for distance. Good mark there by Sinclair. Gee, that was the first cousin to a mark. Look at uh, Phil and some game he's played as well. Up towards the forward pocket. Oh, what a great mark taken there by DeLuca. This is Chris, the senior DeLuca. Really, really well done by oh. Phil. And, and the DeLucas have been, been brilliant really today. Their pressure. pressure. You know, you talk Christo, Horsley and Phelan. Raffle it between the three of them. They've been terrific. I'll tell you the other one, a bit of a wild one you can chuck in is uh, Della Hunty. I was down at the uh, Subiaco uh, pre-match luncheon at the invitation to have a chat with uh, the MC uh, Trevor Jenkins and uh, President Mark Lawrence got up and paid some real tribute to the likes of Della Hundy and uh, Bolden who have come to the club and just uh, given the club so much as individuals and also with the quality of their footy. Um, this occasion, uh, Chris DeLuca disappointed because he lined them up. was off the side of the boot and out on the floor. What about the recruiting too? The likes of Toomey and oh, yeah. Hildebrand coming back to the club. Yep. They've done well, Subiaco. Yep, no worth, mention of those two. Worth, um, worth repeating eighth last year. Just to make a grand final would have been remarkable. Now, certainly it is theirs to lose as East Perth try to conjure something up. They're beyond defensive 50. The punch at the back came from Johnson. It's there again for DeLuca. Ifanu got away from one. Hurry kick though, turn over. In turn, this is Smith who thumps it forward. A good defensive mark again. Subiaco had players everywhere at the moment. Wherever East Perth go by foot or by run, there's someone there in the Lions jumper. Leishman to the outer side. Free kick? No. Mark's been paid. Taken by Smith. Now the Royals. Seth Wallader saw it open up in front of him. Josh Smith, can he take the mark? He juggled it, but he did. He's right in front. This is a must-kick goal for Josh Smith, for East Perth, really, to stay in this contest. Yeah, whenever Cat Wallader gets the ball... Uh, you know he used it beautifully, didn't he? Oh, yeah. You know he's going to use it well. And, and Rum Rumble was just off his man there, wasn't he? He couldn't get back to him. Yeah. It was a great effort by Rumble. He came from 30, 40 metres yeah. away. He's a former Bernie Naylor medalist, Josh Smith. This will be his third. Oh, oh no, it won't. It'll be his second behind. Oh, oh, no. No. That sums it up. That reaction absolutely sums it up. 2-2 two -two for Smith. A goal was what was required. That is just disheartening. Well, Rumble puts everything into that kick. Makes good yardage to Payne. A hurried kick. Touched anyway. Wheeler. Says to Leishman, leave it to me. Then he got ridden into the yeah, ground. The whole, no, on the ball. ball. Well, he never got boot to ball. Yeah. He did try to kick it, but you didn't. <laughs> we know what you tried to do. <laughs> so the mouth guard comes out now. Not a bad man to have it. One bad miss early kick, in the game. Kick of his fourth. Fourth goal on offer. East Perth need it. Not going to quite have the journey. And it's worked over the line by the Subiaco defence. A couple of important chances there. Smith just has to kick that goal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's, it's actually, it destroys the morale, doesn't it, in the team? You just know you need a couple of early goals, and you, one of your gun goal kickers is having a shot from a really gettable angle and just doesn't, doesn't, and misses. Looked tired, didn't it, the yeah. kick? 
Stevenson. Big pack of players are up. No one could take the mark. Ball stays in play. Smith battling against DeLuca. Kicked around the body by Latham. Will come towards the commentary wing. Anderson has done really well. And he'll get the kick away. Puts it back inside the forward 50. Smith from a long way back. Johnson in front. Got a hand to it. Wolf attempts to go up the ground. Great courage shown by Horsley. Was able to trap the footy. Now allows Rumble to get the kick away. Taken by Waters. Couldn't get away from his opponent. Got a hand pass out. Bristow only knows one way. Hard and tough. Though oh. he might be in trouble. No. Held in. Gee, I thought he was going to penalise him there. Yeah. Well, lucky, lucky the ball bobbled out then. Yeah. And gave him the benefit of the doubt. But Bristow again just hard. Hard at it. Well done by Waters as well. Stockley takes clean possession for Subiaco. Bounces into the path of McDougal. Running by Josh DeLuca. DeLuca will head. He wants Hampson. Hampson couldn't mark it. How's the hamstring holding up? Hampson up against Bluey. Sockers it off the ground. Josh DeLuca tackled again. The ball jars out once more. This is Brennan. He's tackled by Yaron. Great desperation from both teams. Free kick spotted. East Perth will have it. They were lucky, East Perth, then. Really well done by, by uh, Hampson there under duress. He, his, his efforts were fantastic. Same with DeLuca. Carter to Wilson, trying to get it to Anderson. Oakley Nichols played it pretty well. He's going to be taken in a tackle. Released a hand pass just in time. Can Butler do likewise? He was spun it around one and a half times. It went to Latham. They've turned it over. Clever little fate with a hand pass by Horsley. Oh, gets the kick in. Great vision and great finish. It's with Hampson, and we know he can get the journey. He kicked One of the uh, all-time champions for Subiaco there. Talk about goal kickers. Todd Bremen in the middle of your turbo. screen there. Yep. The turbo. I tell you what, turbo oh, kick this. He would kick this goal, goal post high into the second <laughs> second tier. And Hampson well, kicked one got from a bit the same talent. spot, didn't he? He's got a bit of talent. The other end, same spot. Same spot. He'd be last a real quarter. chance to kick this as well, I reckon. Yeah. He's been important. Seems to be moving okay since he's had that uh, well, relocation of his hamstring. <laughs> he had that um, turn of speed there a moment ago, uh, Darren, where he held his own sprinting for the footy. And now he goes back as nonchalant as you like, and he's put it through for his third. Long way from home, but uh, just about done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've got it, mate. Yeah. I mean, it, got would, it. it would be hard to see East Perth coming back from here, but you don't want to start celebrating too early. I'm sure the message will go out from Jared Schofield to keep things under control. We heard that from Wayne Orsi at three-quarter time, that this game is a long way from finished yet. Yeah, no, no. Good effort by him there. And uh, that's enough for mine. They need six. They've only kicked six for the game. It's hard to see him getting six to win it. From here. Special mentum to Latham too. Like he had that little handball in the middle there, and uh, Horsley has just worked tirelessly. He looks absolutely stuffed. Horsley, he's uh, he's carrying that body around, but it's a great kick to to Hampson. To use the vernacular, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the middle, it came to feel and uh, hurried uh, kick, and now 50 as well. Heard the explanation from Stuart Parry. Picked up the WAFL Umpire of the Year award on Sandow the middle night. Clutterbuck collects to hand it off to Ash Smith. Oh, kicks into traffic. Clutterbuck again with the opportunity. Back to Smith. Hand pass couldn't find its target in college. We'll have to tackle Field, and the ball comes out again. Cadwallader lurking. It'll be important for them here. Can he pinpoint a target? Sells the dummy. Puts it towards full forward. Numbers with Subi once more. Ball at the back. Toomey will get there first. Oh, oh. Toomey, that's a disaster for him. McInnes can't get a kick away. More desperate defence coming from the Lions. Toomey over the top of it. Shoveled it out the back. Stevenson with it was she. Bristow is able to emerge with it. Well done again, Jason Bristow. But the kick, not what he wanted. And Lee's able to take the mark. He'll play on quickly. He looks to go to the fat side. And he spotted a teammate, Clutterbuck, taking the mark. Yeah, he was definitely going for Oakley Nichols on the other side yeah, then, and, yeah. and Skew it. it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, has hit Clutterbuck. We know what a beautiful kick he is. And uh, although we said that about Josh Smith, Freddie, the kicks on its way. That's not a great kick at all, but he's been able oh, to sneak got it in. in. Just it was ugly, but effective is all they care about at the moment. The Royals just gives them a sniff. Twelve minutes gone. In this final term, it's Subiaco 11 14 80, East Perth 7 10 52. Well, he didn't hit that that well either, did he? But it, uh, it snuck in for a goal, needed badly by East Perth. Mm, well, I still think, I still think, believe Subi have got this game, but uh, probably just gives them a little bit of hope. 
He didn't look terribly convinced himself. Uh, no. Pretty kind of back there, but then uh, nonchalantly rang off as though he thought, "I'm oh, no, out of time." Yeah, if the conditions are perfect. Uh, 28 points is is not a big margin for a side like East Perth, but in the conditions, geez, you'd be. They have to score quick. Dom Sheed cleverly collected the footy and then fired a hand pass out to Clutterbuck. He got one on further afield to Butler. Kicks it up to the half forward line. Feeling in the way again for Subiaco. Hand passes in a bit of hope over his head. Oh, oh, went to Butler. Oh. That's got to be with chicken wing, Judgy. Yeah, he was. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big rap for Worthington. He's been good. He's, He's only been played. Is this only his second game for the year, Clint? This is only his second game for the season. Had real foot problems throughout the, uh, the start of 2014. Played a number of reserve games and came back at exactly the right time oh, for Subi. Did he ever? And he's uh, been outstanding today. He's fitted into a uh, Subiaco defence that, as a unit, has just been outstanding. That's uh, Brad Stevenson. He's played his part as well. Grandson of uh, LB Hawkins, a long, long standing uh, medical man at uh, Subiaco, going back to the days that I played, which gives you some indication. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah. Now, out of bounds on the fall there. Kyle Horsley is filthy with himself. It was Lachlan, it was uh, Chris Phelan that hand, got the hand pass up to him. Quickly into play. Here's Cad Wallet up. The rain stopped for the moment. This is good for the presentations. Clint, you'll be going down shortly to officiate. Fan of that. Left on you. To Toomey. Then to Leishman, who got it on quickly to Hildebrand, but Hildebrand's blind kick has been marked by Wilson, who's been very gallant in defence for East Perth. Wilson right into the middle of the ground. Ball's allowed to bounce. They'll get there again first. Subi Toomey wheels around from the logo, stabs it towards right half forward. Unable to take it was Bowen. Might get another opportunity. Anderson will get there first. Anderson did really well. And he found Payne hard up against the boundary. Didn't get enough on the kick as he would have wanted. Fraser back towards Anderson, just socketed it along the ground. Certainly not deliberate like Subi were appealing for because that was not where he wanted it to go at all. So they'll have ourselves a throw in again. Just not giving up on anything, are they? It's just a desperate the the effort, the commitment. It's been brilliant by Sydney, okay? East Perth though, they'd remember the pain of last year. Ten of these players were there for the 2013 grand final that they lost to West Perth. They would not want to go through that again. They will try their utmost to keep in this contest. Now at the moment, the flag and the Premiership trophy appear to be headed towards Subiaco. One down by Johnson, taken by Worthington. He gets tackled by Sheed, former Subi player. Wolf tries to emerge with it. He's wrapped up. The war horse throws the ball back to the umpire, and it's put aloft once more. Third man up, McGuinness punches it forward. Subiaco players will get there first. Horsley, short hand pass back. What will Toomey do with it? He'll put it high up into the air on centre wing. Players will converge from everywhere. Johnson strong. So too McDougal to stand underneath. Down to Sheed. Short hand pass. Cat Wilder almost stolen away. Sheed again. Goes back by hand to Carter. Carter for the Royals towards left half forward. Sinclair won it down. Oakley Nichols couldn't take it. Horsley tries to clean up, but tackled, lost and holding the ball. Gee, that, that, was, that was one incident where a quick hand pass was the order of the day. Sinclair... Kicks it to centre half forward. Subiaco with the numbers. Rumble affects the punch. Wheeler does brilliantly. Hand passes along the ground to Chris, uh, Josh DeLuca. Couldn't clear the area. Ash Smith does. Got a hand pass up to Oakley Nichols. He was immediately dispossessed. Horsley off the ground. Back to Wilson who tried to hack the ball off the ground. Now there's a foot race. Boland and Anderson. Anderson and Boland. Well done in the end by East Perth. It's Butler who picks the ball up and feeds the hand pass to Anderson, who followed up brilliantly, but the blind kick has gone to Rumble. Darren Rumble, can you believe? Five flags. Could be about to accept his fifth Premiership medal. He'll be the first Subiaco Ever. player to do it. You know, there is 16 and a half minutes gone in this quarter, and East Perth have not impinged one point on Subiaco's three-quarter time lead. Butler, a terrific kick across his body. He's given it to Cadwallader, touches it down in goal from here, Cadwallader. He's that skillful. I tell you, there goes a raking long kick from Cadwallader. That's brilliant. His skills today in these conditions has been, have been absolutely sublime and maybe just breathe some life into East Perth's season. Yeah, well, there uh, it probably does. And if the quarter goes as long as that last one, there's still plenty of time to go. Uh, so uh, We'll be still here tomorrow. <laughs> 22 points. 
breathes a bit of life, in, life into it, doesn't well, it? Well, it does. Doesn't. If they could get one quickly again now and get that 22 to 16. I just think Subiaco have just been too hun hungry around the stoppages and with the contestants. Well, you think so, Lammy. Yeah, way it but, but, you know, they just don't need East Perth to get another one quickly. No. They'd want to, they want to string out the next five or six minutes of this game, and I think if they can do that before East Perth get another goal, that's probably enough to get sure they win. Stockley. Or get one themselves. Down to Waters. He gets the kick away for Subi. That's the direction they wanted it to go in, but Smith is there for the Royals. Smith, short. Marnie's able to turn it over. He's got it for Subiaco. It'll land just inside the attacking 50. The punch at the back from Anderson. Comes down again to DeLuca. He'll go long. Now the ball's been touched. This won't be a goal no matter which way it bounced. It was through on the minor side anyway. Minor score. Anderson, hands on head, looks fatigued. The ball comes in short to Brennan. Chips it now to Oakley Nichols. Crosses the defensive 50. Goes with a long kick down centre wing. Smith is the target. Rumble's been up to the task. Through comes Cadwallader. He's got three to beat. Support now from College. Clever little hand pass off to Lee. Long one forward of the play. Cadwallader's found the right spot. He accepts it. Goes on goal again. He's got oh, the post. Oh, that could have gone either way. In the end, because of the draw, the, the wet grass, it bounced in a straight line and cannon into the post. Tis the crowds come to life, well, haven't they? And he's given it a bit of a lift, Cad Wallader, Cad oh, yeah. Wallader hasn't he? Yep. Worthington, his kick has to be precise. It was. Delahunty couldn't mark it, though. East Perth battle away. Delahunty did well. Fired up, got it down the outer side. Off the ground. Oh, clean bowl to couple. Anderson slipped over. Opportunity now. Bowen onto it. There's a two-on-two two battle inside attacking 50. Tap forward by Yaron. It's through for another minor score. Putting it out to 23 points again in favour of Subiaco. Just about to head into time on in this final turn. Geez, Cad Rolliger is running oh, unbelievably There he is again. At both ends of the ground. He's really given him a and still, chance. Still finding targets. This one is Oakley Nichols. He drives the ball out wide, maybe a bit too wide. Clutterbuck is there. Running with him is Worthington. Clutterbuck does well. Hand pass to himself, then socket the ball along the ground. He gets it into the forward pocket, but there will be a ball in. And the rain is coming again. Some very dark clouds coming in from the west. Leishman has been a star on Hill. His dad, Steve, Let him run. former teammate of mine, will be absolutely proud as punch. Did he play before. a premiership side, Lemmy, Steve? Uh, yeah, pretty sure he did. Here's the chance now for Blee. He got it from Lee, and this will be marked by Rumble. Oh, won't he be uh, fated tonight if they go on and win this? Darren Rumble, just a, a controlling kick, steadying things down to Toomey. There's some experience between those two. Toomey, Rumble, and now Stevenson joins the queue. It's had a couple of really important one-on-ones Rumble lately. Um, yeah, all, all game, but some really important ones in the last 10 minutes. Thumping kick. Stockley wanted it most, but spoil at the back came from Johnson. Tried to get it out himself off his boot. Out of Brennan. A short hand pass. Well, that was intriguing from Oakley Nichols. Didn't work out at all. Another 16 in Hildebrand. Kicked around the body. Carter goes to ground. Bowen's got him high. Free kick centre win. East Perth, no time, is running out. Got a, got got a in three goals kicked this quarter, so it shouldn't go anywhere near the length of that last quarter. Carter. He wants McInnes. Had three to beat. Ball to the ground. Toomey got it out to Delahunty. Off his knee. Yaron ran straight back into traffic. Good block came from Lefanu. Oh. Allowed Toomey to gather. Go, turned it straight over. Butler into the left forward pocket. Here's an opportunity again for Smith, but he must kick better than we've seen so far this afternoon. This is a tough angle. He is good enough to kick this goal, but it has not been his day so far. He plays on, puts it across the face, and a minor score. He's such a beautiful kick. I, I would have liked him with a deeper pocket like that just to kick the drop punt. Yeah, yeah. and the bruise would have been helping a bit, I think, yes. Darren. I think that's just the... I, I know the round-the-body um, people practice and all, but he is just such a beautiful set shot. Wade Toomey, can he be a premiership player with his second club? The ball nullified off the hands of the pack, boundary throw-in. Wade, Wade Toomey's been fantastic oh, yeah. too when the game's been, you know, when the heat's been on in this last quarter. He's had some really important involvements as well. 22 minutes, as you can see there, now ticking over in the final quarter of the 2014 
decider Stockley there's Worthington to Hildebrandt been good today Brennan Brennan has been very good finds a teammate in Smith just forward of the center circles goes for distance he can do nothing else really camping underneath it there was uh, Stevenson didn't take the mark but he contests really well goes in for the second effort Wheeler had it, lost it. Worthington tried to kick it through traffic. Wheeler's back in there again, taking in a, a mauling tackle. He's put down, but he does well enough. So you've got a feel for someone like uh, Craig Wolf there. The disappointment of last year is going to be magnified if they don't get over the line this year. Here's a chance for Josh Smith. Did they get into his back? The umpire says Shit. play on. Subiaco, oh, beautiful hand pass out there from Lee. Oh, to Butler, who switched it on the left boot. All class from Liam Butler. Sally Bowd shows that it is a goal. Well, another goal. Only 23 and a bit minutes have gone in the quarter. Judgey, we know they've been long quarters. Still time for East Perth, but it's running out really, really quickly. Well, it's only four goals, Lammy, for the quarter now. Yep. So, you know, in the last quarter we had eight. So that uh, might have explained why it went for so long. But... Uh, I think they've done enough, Subi, here to win. Uh, as I keep saying, they just wouldn't want to give up another one straight away here. If they could get a centre break and kick a goal, East Perth, you, you know, it might just raise some doubt in the heads of the uh, Subi players. Well, but picked, they've done enough, I think. I picked Subiaco by 16 points. Did you? Yep. You'll be delighted if the siren sounds now. Feeling. He gets the kick away. Yaron just tries to slap it forward for Subi. There was no one there. Another opportunity is that it was knocked out by Carter. Lee, uh, Lee rather, tried to give it back to a teammate. Stolen by Yaron. He kicks towards full forward. That was inventive again. Hampson looked like he's been held there, but it would have been a tough decision to play that one. Well, he did well just to stick out the right boot, almost soccer style, and knock the ball away, and we'll be balling it up now. Well, they need a couple of minutes of the ball in this end of the ground to, yeah. to ensure they win this. Can't be any exits now at no. all. In rap for those who braved the conditions this afternoon. Now East Perth can go beyond their defensive 50. The ball's to the outer side. Clutterbuck will get there first. Tackled by Efanu over the boundary line. Ball be spun back into play. Do East Perth have one final push? I can't say I'm kicking four goals. They need, down. Down. Three. they need a few more final pushes though, Clint, don't they? Yeah, they do. Lee takes it back over the boundary line. Yeah. Just, they've just done enough, Subi. I think they understand what's on the end of this and they're not going to give it up easily. It's been a wonderful story, Subiaco, this season. Where they came from, finished just well, off a, the foot of the ladder last year. Yeah, when you consider last week against East Fremantle. Really shouldn't they, be here. Well, could, got, could have easily not been here. Just got to switch the ball and go now, don't they? They've got to yeah. take risks as much as they can. Just move the ball quickly, play on at all costs. I'd be coming out this side of the ground if you could. Two, oh, you've just got, you just got to get out of the middle, don't you? Yeah. Get it and belt it down the middle and run. Two kicks last week go from being behinds to goals, and it's East Fremantle here today taking on East Perth. They're the margins that we yep. speak of. They're happening games of footy, isn't it? Subiaco. So from eighth to now, looking like they'll be the premiers in 2014. East Perth, though, they won't give up. This is Butler again. Butler towards right half forward. Smith couldn't take the mark. Subi will get players around it. Smith will dive on top of it again. Will it come out? Mm -hmm. Umpire will circle. This could be holding the ball if the ball well, does emerge. The ball. Oh, now gee. it does emerge. They let it go for a long time. Rumble got a shorthand pass away. That might have been high. Stolen away from Toomey by Johnson into the right forward pocket. Latham under pressure from Sheed. Got a kick away. Worthington will just soccer it beyond defensive 50. Out after it again, Carter. He'll pick it up at left half forward. Carter, the hand pass to Brennan, who controls it pretty well. Leaves the ball behind. Yaron swoops to Subiaco, to Bristow, across his body. Finds Leachman. The hand pass a bit too slick for Yaron. Doesn't matter. Yaron, illegal disposal. Great tackle there by Blee. And there's the rain. The rain. That Subi would appreciate. <laughs> the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure if I'm going to appreciate it quite as much. Tumbling down. <laughs> Blee's kick straight into the arms and the generous chest of Lachlan Delahunty. What a decision he made to come west and join Subiaco. And hasn't he played a part this afternoon? The kick up toward Boland who came across with him. Cadwallet has been one of East Perth's best. 
pumps it forward. Going back, Worthington quite happy to see the ball dribble over. That rain is just That's the heaviest uh, of the day. It's just been at the, at the right perfect time, time for them, exactly. Cohen. And they deserve it. They deserve to win. They've been terrific today. They've been the better side all day. Clint Wilden leaving us to go down to set up for Good luck, Clint. presentations. <laughs> this is he's just putting on a life jacket as we speak. <laughs> It is absolutely pouring down. Josh DeLuca boldened across his body into space. Plenty of it. It breaks toward the boundary line. Blee tracks the ball. Onto the left boot. It's all going Subiaco's way at the moment. The blind kick from Blee has gone to Boland. He smart, will just smart knock by, the clock. Smart by Boland. He could have gone forward, but they just want to take a bit of heat. Now he gets it long down the line. Long down the line to a really big pack. McDougal's in it. Bristow at ground level. Josh DeLuca, Horsley, hand passes to Latham, kept his composure. Oh. Fraser went to ground. Well, a bit of a push there from Yaron. Wasn't much in it. Now Fraser, very short to Brennan, who will run with the footy as the siren goes. And Subiaco, the underdog, has won the 2014 Premiership. Scenes of absolute jubilation. It has been the year of the Lion. Who would have thought at the completion of 2013 that this team would be the Premiers, let alone even be in the grand final? And the disappointment of Craig Wolf we saw last year how disappointed he was. And another one has slipped under the guard, but Subiaco will be singing the song and waving the flag for a fair while to come. Let's just listen to the Subiaco theme song blare out around Subiaco Oval. Well, well done, Jared Schofield. Well, fantastic year as a coach. He's taken them. His last couple of years have been brilliant, but uh, to take them all the way, you know, they, they lost their first final and to see him out there and, 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 and look at him, you, you just could not be happier and... Uh, you know, he's obviously got great relationships with his players. Uh, it's a fantastic effort by Jared Schofield and really sets up his coaching career too as a young man. Um, done, done a brilliant job. Well, I Congratulations. Think he's not made any secret of the fact, but nor has he uh, been really out there about uh, going to the next level and coaching in the AFL, but certainly what he knew he had to do was to get this job done first. As we see uh, disconsolate uh, Josh Smith tried so hard this afternoon, sitting in the pouring rain. That tells its own story, doesn't it? And but Craig, Craig Wolf's the one that uh, I, I have course. that real... Yeah. You, you just feel for, like, he couldn't have given any more than he's got all year. And you talk about his leadership at his footy club, he'd be uh, pretty shattered yep. at the moment. Uh, Let's go down to Rod Willard, who's got one of the Subiaco stars. Yes, thanks very much, Phil. I've got Jason Bridgeford, mate. Fantastic win. You've been at the club for a long time. How does it feel? Uh, words kind of, it hasn't sunk in yet. I'm still uh, just shell-shocked at the moment. And, man, it's good. unbelievable. We're going to enjoy the shit out of this one. <laughs> Mate, you had to do it the hard way. They, uh, they beat you convincingly in the second semi. You come out here, you had no fear against a, a side with a lot of names. Uh, they took it right up to you. It was pretty even in that first half. But in that third quarter, you just willed it, you wanted it, and it just started falling right for you. Oh, it did. I the... Um, that really hurt us that when they touched us up that first final and from the from the second we that siren went after that game I just wanted another crack at them and um, look we, we just got there last week it was hard work and uh, the way the guys performed today was unbelievable so yeah you're gonna enjoy it, enjoy it. They predicted the heavy rain and and uh, the windy conditions but th did you have any worry about that did you think it was going to suit you? Um, I wasn't really sure we haven't had too many wet days this year so it was hard to get any gauge um, we, I reckon whenever it's wet like this, it's just whoever wants it more. And I mean, the endeavour was there and can't be questioned. And yeah, we got, got, the, got the choggies. You also come in with three blokes that I suppose, you know, missed a little bit of footy before the uh, grand final today. They are under a bit of a cloud. It was probably a big risk for the players and for the coach. But uh, Georgie stood up. Uh, Dillahunty was fantastic. And uh, uh, the captain was, was fantastic once again. Yeah, it's, uh, look, I didn't know which way the coaches were going to go. Um, we didn't really know till yesterday. And oh, to see the ball in Georgie's hands a couple of times there and he just put it for the middle, it just, uh, just shows it was the right decision in the end. So, yeah. Mate, not? your game yourself was fantastic. You were in and under, you tackled, you did everything that was asked of you. Uh, well done. And uh, I know you well. You're going to enjoy the night. Absolutely. Thanks, mate. Well done, buddy.
Yeah, well done to uh, Jason, Jason Bristow. Let's go to Michael Genovese, who's got uh, one of the other stars, Kyle Horsley, the skipper. Yeah, with the winning captain, Kyle, how does it feel to be a, a premiership captain of the club you love? I can't explain it. I feel, I feel weak. I feel light. The, the euphoria is just it's unbelievable. You know? Just about got run over there, mate. Uh, talk us through that last quarter. Did you feel like they were coming at you at some stage? Yeah, yeah, of course we did. You know, they're a quality outfit with some quality people, some quality players. You know, Cam Wellington's goal, you know, it's unbelievable to do that in the fourth quarter. It was incredible. So, you know, we knew they'd come. We knew they'd keep coming. We just thought if we stuck to our structures and didn't go on our shell, we'd be able to get the result. Can you tell me about the dynamic between the group? What's the relationship like between the boys? The, the boys, you know, I think you played in the club, Dennis. You know yourself, mate. It's incredible. You know, well, um, I left for, for two years, come back, and there was you know, 40 new blokes in the club. But the culture that had been set in place is still exactly the same. They're all good fellas. You know, it's, um, you know, to share this moment with them boys is something special. What have you got planned for the week, mate? Nah, a couple of quiet beers, mate. Really at the moment, I think. Enjoy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I'm pretty sure he'll be enjoying and savouring every minute of it. And Kyle Horsley, what a skipper. What a skipper's performance. You know, I tipped uh, East Perth, I mean, Hutton Subiak up by 6 foot 10 points and Horsley to win the Simpson medal. I'm not going to be that far off this. It was uh, terrific just a moment ago to see Callum Sinclair, former Subiaco player, over uh, amongst that group, just shaking hand, hands with all of his former teammates. Uh, certainly would be gut-wrenching for him. But, uh, he has got other fish to fry, but uh, there's the man in the middle there, George Hampson. What a season he had. Absolutely outstanding, particularly in the early part of the season. He uh, played state footy, of course, at about the halfway mark. Uh, some injuries caught up with him as the season developed, but he played his part this afternoon when he was called upon. He was limited with what he was able to do, but uh, George Hampson showed all of his class, kicked a couple of three, in fact, telling goals, and uh, was one of the players of their season, jointly with Brett Marnie, of course, was... Uh, shared the best and fairest Tom Outridge medal last year. Shane Yaron, first year at the club, really savouring all of this. And it's uh, an irreplaceable feeling, Judgy. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's a great feeling when you win uh, you know, premierships, obviously, and uh, particularly when you win them against, probably against the odds. OK, we've got uh, one of the boys down there has got the victorious coach in uh, Jared Schofield. Go down to you, Spin. Thanks very much, Phil. Jared, great win, mate. Uh, well deserved. Uh, the underdogs, but uh, you really proved the difference today. Oh, look, yeah, the underdogs will take it and we'll work with it. Hopefully now we're the favourites. But uh, look, we knew that if we played our best footy and just sort of really addressed a few areas by being harder at the footy and try and match them in that area um, and be clean with our hands and take our opportunities. And in the first quarter, I thought, here we go, we're going to waste opportunities. But the boys have, the boys have grown all year. And, and like I said, we've learned a lot in the space of two weeks playing finals footy and they got their just rewards today. It was a pretty even first half before the... Uh, the break, but in the third quarter, you must have said something to the boys because they come up and they just really wanted to win probably more than the opposition. I said a lot that they probably didn't even listen to because of all the blur, but it was about showing composure. We came in with a bit of momentum. Um, I just wanted to relax the boys, compose themselves, and I mentioned one person or one name, and that was Barry Strack. Barry Strack's our property man, been there for 50 odd years. He hasn't been well over the last few years. He wants to spend a bit of time with his family. I just, said, I just mentioned his name, and I said, do it for him. Was there any risk in the back of your mind bringing in those three players that, that were injured? you know, the, the week before? No, not really, because I, I made sure that they did everything right on the track, and, and they're honest guys, and, and I knew that they wouldn't put themselves before the team. You know, George, we thought he had a quad, he ended up doing his hamstring and played through that. So for someone like him to play through a grade one hamstring after half time is a credit to himself as well. But at the end of the day, when you have 22 blokes just doing their bit, you get your rewards. Horsley, fantastic again. Bristow in and under those guys that you really rely on. Feeling fantastic when he went through the middle as well, mate. Uh, had a lot of stars and just a lot of guys that have been with the club a long time. Yeah, look, the up couple of the unheralded ones, like Fez got, probably goes unnoticed. I thought he was fantastic in the clearances. Young Jolie Latham, Frank Stockley, who didn't play in the second semi two weeks ago, he was fantastic. But look, I could probably go through them all. Worthington got better. Oh, look, it's just exciting for our group. Disappointment for our reserves today, but we'll grow from them as a group. We'll enjoy this, uh, enjoy it tonight, and definitely. What about what about your future, buddy? Uh, you want to go to the next level? Uh, and obviously makes it a little bit more attractive now that you've won a premiership. Ah, uh, look, that would be nice someday. But look, I've got, I've, I've got a business. I've got a family that I love being around, and I love being around these boys. I want to try and win a few with these blokes first. But uh, what will you say to these boys now when you go in and uh, chat to them? Let's enjoy, the, let's enjoy the night, eh, boys? Yeah. <laughs> Good on you, Scoey. See you, mate. Well done. Yeah, well done to uh, Jared Schofield. I don't think he'll be having to uh, persuade them too hard, Judgey, to enjoy themselves tonight. No, I don't think there's any chance of that at all, uh, Philip. I'd suggest that they're probably hanging out for a frigidly cold one as we speak. 
All right, well, uh, we are going to go down into the middle of a sodden Subiaco Oval now to our Master of Ceremonies for the presentations, Clint Wilden. Grand final. And ladies and gentlemen, could you please direct your attention to Mr. Clint Wilden for the official presentations. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon and congratulations on braving the conditions for the 2014 Amy WAFL Premiership Cup. The WAFL appreciates the support of leading national motorhome and travel insurer Amy, Amy the official naming rights partner for the 2014 WAFL season. Thanks to all of you who attended today. Congratulations on braving the conditions and coming out and seeing what has been a fantastic grand final. Thank you to you all. The hallmark of the 2014 season has been the close and exciting competition between all the teams. Every club fought hard for a place today. East Perth and Subiaco earning their place in today's game. And please show your appreciation for both teams today, ladies and gentlemen. Another part of this great season and something that our game would not be possible without is, of course, the umpires. Football's theme of umpiring is everyone's business ask that we respect the role of umpires and acknowledge the important role that they play. And I'd ask the umpires ball champion for 2014, David, uh, Davis Shawcross, to come forward and make the presentations to today's WAFL Grand Final umpires. Davis, if you'd come up. In the field for today's League Grand Final were Stuart Parry, Matt Adams and Scott McPhee and the emergency Rob McCaw. Running the boundary, we had Michael Washbourne, Brad Hunt, Ryan Kukura and Josh Garrett. And in goal was Sally Bowd and Lauren French with our scorer today, Brody Payne. Ladies and gentlemen, the umpires do a terrific job. We respect them for their commitment and dedication. We also thank Davis Shawcross for his great contribution to the game via umpiring. Please give our umpires a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, umpires. Ladies and gentlemen, while today we have a winning team, we also have a losing one that played some fantastic football throughout the year. Minor premiers, it's never easy to lose, but could you please join me in welcoming the captain of the East Perth Football Club today on stage to say a few words to the Royal supporters. Please make him welcome Craig Wolf, everyone. Second, second time unlucky. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say congratulations to the uh, Subiaco Football Club. Football Club. Scully and Horse, um, tremendous effort. Um, I thought you were probably the best team all year and um, I think it's um, probably fitting that you came away with a win today, the way, you, the way you attacked the football, played the fundamentals really well and um, I hope you really enjoy it. Um, to the supporters, uh, East Perth and Subiaco and uh, supporters from other football clubs, thanks for coming down in Pretty average conditions. Um, hopefully it was a good good spectacle. And to our guys, disappointing. Um, obviously uh, we just got to stick together, um, put in the hard work over the off season and come back better. So thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the enduring features of WA football is, of course, the Simpson Medal. It has been presented since 1945 to some outstanding players in grand finals and state games. And could I please ask Mr Paul Simpson to join me on stage to announce this year's winner. Thank you, Clint. It gives me great pleasure to announce that the winner of the Simpson Medal for this year's grand final is Jason Bristow. Thank 
Oh, what a day. It still hasn't sunk in yet, but uh, thanks East Perth for the game and obviously had a great season, but uh, unfortunately it didn't get up today for us. It's like in a day I'm never going to forget. Uh, I'd like to mention one special person at the footy club. Been there for 32 years. This is his last uh, day helping out Barry Strack. He was in our minds all day. He's an absolute legend, so glad we could have the win for him. Thanks, guys. Uh, I mean, arguably, he would have been right up there. I'll be interested to see the Simpson medal votes, but Kyle Horsley, what a performance again today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he led from the front. He was so important. Missed last week, and we saw his impact he had today by getting him, coming back in the First side. Of all, Amy and the Waffle, you know, uh, footy's not, you know, not doable without sponsors, and the Waffle struggles a little bit with that aspect with the AFL coming in. So, you know, any sponsorship's huge. Uh, to East Perth, commiserations. I had the uh, pleasure of spending most of Friday with Wolfie, and, you know, you got some great people at your club. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, being uh, pretty close with, you know, some really good people, so stick tight. You know, you you've been the best team all year. It's just the ball didn't go your way today. So, uh, to our boys, um, you know, fuck. So, ooh. To our boys, uh, well done. <laughs> uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. I don't know what to say yet. Yeah, to Strack, man, mate, the boys love you. Um, you know, you're the heartbeat of the club, and it's just been incredible. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask the chairman of the WAFC to come forward to present the he really did Mr. Frank Cooper. Lead from the uh, from the front, and, uh, and again, great the to WAFL see like him. Yeah, it was great to see uh, Kyle Horsley really uh, up there, leading from the front. A, a player who came back from the club, uh, he was uh, over with the. Um, the Gold Coast Suns and uh, yes. came back to the club and was immediately elected uh, the captain by his peers. That's the sort of esteem in which he He's is held, held. Yes. and there he is holding the couple off now. Frank Cooper presenting it to him and a jubilant team surrounding him and uh, they will uh, deserve all the spoils of uh, this great premiership. Let's go to now to uh, some of the important statistics coming out of the grand final. Uh, you can, look, of course, look at the stats and take out of it what you like, but at the end of the day, they uh, got the score on the ball that really ma mattered. There it is, the 2014 Premiership pennant. And Kyle Horsley, a uh, big smile on his face. Uh, they're a pretty close team. So the Subiaco supporters, I don't know if they actually came here today, Judgey, expecting the sort of euphoria that comes with a, a grand final win, but uh, it just goes to show you, when you come to a grand final, you never know what you're going to get. Well, you don't, and the thing, the thing about it, they just they out-competed and out-contested East Perth today in the end, I reckon, for a longer part of the game, and that's why they got the, they got the points, and uh, that's a credit to uh, Jared Schofield and Kyle Horsley, who are the two leaders of the team, yep. and the players jumped in behind them and did exactly that, and that's why they got the result they got. Yeah, fabulous uh, performance by Jared Schofield as well. And uh, the whole Subiaco Football Club, the, uh, the recruiting that they did uh, has all paid dividends. The hard work, obviously, and uh, Kyle Horsley and uh, Craig Wolf trading plaudits. And let's have a look at the way that the game unfolded with uh, it being really tight throughout when you look at it. It was uh, East Perth who uh, got off to a better start, but Subiaco very, very inaccurate early. A lot of those were... Uh, Rush behinds, but it was East Perth by a point at quarter time, by four points at half time. Subiaco got really on top with six goals to two in the third quarter. They led by 28 points at the final change. East Perth would not go away and they ran out winners 11 16 to 9 12. The margin 16 points, so it was a fabulous effort. And uh, look at the, uh, the the stats there. Judging not a heck of a lot in the st stats. No. Look at the handballs. The, the, the marks from East Perth, 71 on a wet day to 27. So, but the 48 to 44 inside 50 took an advantage. And 15 to 10, they got on top in the centre breaks in the end, uh, the Lions. Well, it certainly has been the Lions. Subiaco, the Premiers for 2014. It was a great Premiership win today. Look, we've really enjoyed bringing the football to you every week here on the ABC. It's been a terrific year. We hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you and we remain committed to be involved, the ABC does, with footy in the waffle next year.